Megamon used this shit before I did. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to the Ball Game Podcast. Ball Game, Ball Game, Ball Game. I am the innocent bystander, Matt Sullivan. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm Ortiz. How are we doing, guys? What's going on? I'm Dean. I'm Chris. Please make sure that you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave us a comment. Let us know what, if you enjoy what we're talking about. If you guys want us to talk about anything else, please do let us know. We might have a little bit of time to fill today. So please do make sure to let us know and uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get right into everything. So yesterday, for those of you that don't actually watch much of baseball or have those Twitter notifications on, the New York Yankees made a big time move and now have the best starting rotation in all of the MLB. Come on, man. So come on. Under what? <laughs> How? What do you mean? You have the best rotation in the AL East. No, uh, I'll give you that one. M L and B. In what way is Major it League better baseball? than the New York Mets? Um yeah, you don't have the best top to bottom. It's better. How? So Garrett Cole's better than Max Scherzer. Right? Debatable. Carlos Rodon's better no, actually, no he's that's not. cap. Um, Verlander just won. Verlander okay, 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 yeah, okay, so. okay. Verlander. Okay, but you can go, but you can reverse it and say Verlander is better than Cole, and that Verlander's Scherzer is better than Rodon. But no, you could say that. And you then could. our three, four, five is better. Who are? How? Who's your five? Carrasco, who's super solid this year. Mm-hmm. Who's your three and four? Senga, right? Senga. Senga and... uh, bro, Senga is mid at best. Uh, we have best. Nestor Cortez. How do you clear. know he's mid at clear. best? How do you know? Severino, I, have whoever you been, Have you been watching the Korean league? Clear. No, but like I, I read up a ton about him, and it a lot of it was saying like, yo, his game is not going to translate that well to the MLB. Like he might get rocked. His walk rate's super high. Um, so I was like, all right, cool. So like, fuck that. Um, we're just better. Like Yankees plus ratio. Like it's that simple. I feel like you guys say this every year, and then you guys end up losing nah, nah. in the playoffs. Ro- so do we. So do Rodon we, changes I mean, everything. Do we? I, yeah, you guys just got fucked. I mean, yeah, but I never so have expectations as a Mets fan. Astros yeah, but like we time. made it further. You made it further just to lose and end up in the same spot. We Congrats, you did it. it we did it. We both ended right. up on the couch, bro. Congrats. The couch. <laughs> on the couch. Uh-huh. Speaking of couches, shout out to Shields, man. Um, sitting his ass on the couch. And Every shout out Leo. Playoffs. Shout out Leo, because I know Green looked at me when I said couch. <laughs> <laughs> shout out Leo for fucking peeing the on the Shields, couch. When, when, when fantasy playoffs come around, the Shields picks his spot. He, he has an eye on it the whole season. He's like, wow, that looks real comfy over there. And I wonder where, where I'm going to be at the end of the play. Oh, wait. Fuck it on the couch, the Shields. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this the past couple of days in our Dynasty chats. Nah, the Shields, it's all been... love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about all that. I'll Sorry. Be all right. No, really. It's it's fine. No, it's it's. It's not all love. No, it's not. It's all love. Yeah. No, sure. at, the end, of the, at sure. the end of the day. He, bro, nah. He texted me last night and he was like, you know, it's not personal, right? I was like, bro. no, it's personal with me. I was like, bro, Ooh. it ain't personal. Nah, I feel like I he don't like, give a fuck about what I say. He just like, Dean, I don't care about no, you. No, he doesn't care about you. <laughs> You're just to the side. It's like me, it's personal. With me, it's personal. I just personal. like saying shit to him. Because I ruined the league. So, yeah. I mean, but, you guys did collude. There was collusion. Yo, yesterday was comedy <laughs> in the basketball. Yeah, chat. that was that awesome. It was hilarious. I'm so happy bro. I was there to witness a, a dynasty football argument. Like argument? No, yeah. not so even that. What? Just the fact that he made that trade and we bullied him. Bullied him into it. Wait, what, what was the trade? So what happened? He Why? traded yeah. Porzingis for Brandon Ingram and a third <laughs> to his boy, Spencer. <laughs> And like that's not really a good trade. That, it's that's a really not, bad trade that's, for Dynasty that's, that's basketball. That's a really bad trade, but, really bad. But just in not, general, not that it should be vetoed. No, it's, no, it's, it's not a vetoable trade. No trade Wait, the Shields was getting Porzingis. No, the Shields was getting Brandon, Brandon Ingram. Ingram oh, so he was fleecing thing. his boy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So then we bullied him, but like we were joking. Like none of us give it. I don't we think were, any of us. Me, Trunks, and Chris were literally just trolls. But I don't think like I don't think any of us give a shit about Dynasty basketball. Not in, not in the fucking. Slide. So, I mean, I set my lineup, but that's about tank it. for Victor, baby. Yeah. So we bullied him, and he was long. like, "Fine, I'll veto it. This is not fair. I dealt with all that bullshit in football, and now I make one trade in basketball, and I have to veto <laughs> it." So we vetoed the trade, and then I was like, "Yo, like." We're just we, shocking. We, we, bro, yeah, right after so he then it. he did the trade, but he gave up Porzingis a first and a second <laughs> just for Brandon Ingram. 
So we bullied him instead of getting a third round pick. He we bullied him first. into giving up a first and a second. <laughs> but that, that's definitely <laughs> a definitely a better trade. This, it definitely is a like, better trade. That's definitely a so no. That's a fair, fair trade now. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But it's just like but I, I agree. The first one wasn't like no so it, bad okay, that it, it, no, 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 no. Not, it wasn't bad enough to get vetoed tight. because not everyone needs to. Not every trade needs to be a win-win. No, exactly. Like someone could lose a trade. Yeah. Like it wasn't. Uh, but again, most trades don't get vetoed. Like we aren't. We weren't vetoing any fucking trades in um in fucking dynasty football. So we were like, yeah, whatever. We'll. Has we'll, we'll your, it's because your commission was a puppet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Clemmy nah. would Clemmy would do anything you want if you could convince him. No. Nah, <laughs> yeah, Clem. Uh, in terms of being a, a commish. No. You hear that, Clem? Well, no, I'm the assistant to the commission, so everything that Clemmy did as a commission came through back to me. Do you he remember do the it. trunks thing when he when he tried um making that trade? I pleaded with Clemmy. I was like, "Yo, leave your happen. shit on the floor!" Oh, <laughs> oh my god. god, he's going in a circle. Oh, <laughs> no. My boy just did a 360 cocky. Oh, he just gritted across the bat. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, there's no way I'm picking him up. <laughs> Yo, oh my God. I can't wait till Green hears about this. Yo, one. <laughs> you were literally two feet from the bro, fucking wheelie Yo, pad, he, bro. I watched him. He walked on the wheelie pad, looked at it, walked off, and said, "I right, this is the spot. Oh, my God. God. Damn, he took the walk to pwn. <laughs> <laughs> to poke, to pooping, <laughs> to pooping. Shut up, dude. <laughs> Shut up. But oh, oh yeah, Carlos oh, Rodon. Oh my things. god, bro. Yeah, it's pretty garbage. Yeah. All right, early He's gonna get shell shocked. Early Awful World contract. Series favorites. Who we got? Early Real world. quick. Astros versus Dodgers. Astros take it in six. Mets Yankees. Mets take it in seven. Mets Yankees. Mets take it in five. Mets Yankees. Yankees take it in six. Wow. So. You guys really think the Mets and the Yankees are going to the World Series? No, not at all. It's just I would love it. I it's would, for content. Yeah, cool. It's, it's just, I'm I'm just being a hopeful fan, which yeah. is dangerous as a Mets fan. I mean, and as if there's fan. any yeah. time where it could happen, it's the like next you couple said of that years. Last year, no, yeah, we did, but no, like but it was also true. We're then. Right? Yeah. I mean, if there was a time, top, they're both top five teams. I mean, yeah. If there was a time for both teams to make the World Series, this is probably as good a time as ever. Honestly, Astros and Dodgers plus rich. Plus the fuck the fuck the fucking Astros, bro. They're not making it back. They're done. If the Giants I didn't say give, that, though, you say that and then they'll uh, win the World Series. If yep. the Giants didn't give Correa thirteen goddamn years, the Mets were fucking gonna get it. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, I mean, hundred percent. I mean, I, yeah. th- I think they were probably using the Mets as leverage, but still, bro, he got paid. I mean, n- thirteen got, fucking years. If we years gave him thirteen crazy. years, I would have been like, I would have right, been well, upset. Pretty we dumb. gave him thirteen. Years. Yeah, that, yeah, I mean, that cool. was... He's he's twenty eight. Yeah, he's twenty eight. We've been playing till he's forty one. I'm good. Well, yeah, we already no. have a Francisco Lindor fucking yeah. contract, so so what would he have done? Play third? Yeah, yeah. Well, he said he was willing to play third next to Lindor. That was the only person who he'd be willing to do that for. I think wow. that that's a lot of like Dominican, and Puerto Rican shortstops, like like bias. Yeah, they're they like, love playing like, with each other. Like, we'll move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To play with. Play, I play mean, with Javi Lindor. ended up signing away, but no. But the, if they were to sign with the Mets, they were cool with not playing their primary. Yeah, position. yeah. I mean, you will key dodge the bullet not getting Javi back anyway. The dude's been fucking ass well the contract but, that we were offering him wasn't like super player friendly it was like a hundred something mil for like six years what do you get see i think he got six for 140 he got he right got, he got a lot it's not, six a, for it's like not a crazy deal it's really I mean, not no crazy. for a guy that's batting 200 and striking it's out the first year of his deal. you gotta wait till it plays out a little bit I think. Um, I mean, look remember. look at lindor it's I don't his like, first years i don't man. love lindor, was, not lindor Baez, but like i think he could still turn it around you know you knew he were just hit or miss that's the thing. Like literally, he's literally. Like I mean, most players, most miss. players are usually hit or miss. So they hit the baseball, or they don't. Yep. Wow. Thank you, Ortiz. Yep. Yep. Good. That's elite coverage. Thank you of the sport. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> elite coverage of the sport. But anyways, um, speaking of hit or miss, this past week, in our fucking fan duel, yo, and Leo, picks, stop chewing the fucking wires. Actually, I think my boy's going crazy. We'll talk some about football before we get into that. All right. So, um. Oh, don't night, look at me, cocky butt. Jesus Christ. Last night we had our uh, Thursday night football game as per usual. Well, not we. We didn't play oh, yeah. in that football game. Um, Almost did. The San Francisco 49ers. And the you forget about the other team because it's the Seattle Seahawks and they played like shit. And, yo, did, did anyone uh, see the uh, call on Nick Bosa? The roughing mm-hmm. the, rough the passer. 
I fucking hate these rough in the passer rules, man. Was that when uh it was returned for the pick six that didn't count? Yes. Okay. Was yeah. there an explanation? The explanation uh, that was he that he landed him? on him with his body weight. I mean, a that's fuck. kind of the rule, no? Yeah, but it's fucking bullshit because, like, what do you want the guy to do? Levitate? I mean, I think if the play ended differently, not in a pick six, it wouldn't have been a big, as big a deal. I mean, sure, but like, mm-hmm. it did. Yeah, but I mean, it is I understand, the rule. But it's still the fucking rule. I, I don't rules know. could be stupid. It's still the rule. Yeah, it is. It is a bad rule. I personally think the rough in the pass the rules are terrible. You can't blame rule, the refs. You got to blame the league. Yeah, I That's guess. Right. Um, but anyways, yeah. I mean, San Fran, as I've said in the past, looks like a Super Bowl contender. Even with fucking Brock. Even with Brock Purdy, that's how scary good that team is. No picks. Like, no that's Debo all you, that's Samuel. All you need to do. Like, don't let Brock Pur- Purdy fucking turn the ball over and you'll still win. Bro, no, no Debo. McCaff goes to a functional football Offense, team. yeah. Well, no Debo. George Kittle becomes God. God. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. Kittle had a fucking crazy yeah. game. And for those of you who and had McCaff him in fantasy, be- Dean being one of them. Will be. I'm sorry. Almost started Evan Ingram. This over. is when your season ends. Bro, when I he wish said you that in the PlayStation okay, party. Right. Just, but, just, okay, just Evan Ingram put up 40 fucking points on fucking 16 targets. It's tough to not start a guy after getting 16 targets. I agree, but... When George Kittle's been doing absolutely George nothing Kittle with no Debo was a different story. I get it. I mean, that's why I made the last minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had him starting yesterday morning. I had Evan Ingram in my starting No, like I know, yesterday because you said, in the, you said in the PlayStation party, you were like, Evan Ingram over George Kittle, championship moves. And I'm it like, it is though, but it is what <laughs> that is a championship move. Good thing I didn't make it. But you were tricked. My <laughs> Good thing, thing is, I didn't want to win a championship. That's but. the smart move. Like in a way, it's kind of a smart move. You, you, but you, you traded well, quite a bit of assets well, right. for that, George. That's Kittle. what the idea was. That I made a trade for this guy who, the idea was to help me in the fucking playoffs. I didn't care about regular season games. Nobody so does. He showed up when it mattered. Shout out George Kittle. Yeah. What he put up? I haven't. Four catches, 93 yards, and two touchdowns, but he put up like 25 fantasy points. Yeah, he's he's a beast, bro. He's an animal. For tight ends this year, 25 is more than enough. Yeah. I'll say it's half decent for a tight end. And it's not even that Brock Purdy like looked like solid enough to win. He actually at points looks like a good quarterback. To be the last pick in the draft, it's pretty impressive. And to do this in his rookie season. So most most quarterbacks that are in the seventh drafted in the seventh round, most of them haven't even none of them have had winning records, Usually obviously. On practice squads. And most of them don't even end up playing more than like say three, four games, and that's just because they get thrown into it. Brock Purdy started now, what these are two in a row, and one of them was against the fucking goat, and he fucked the goat, destroyed him. Oh boy, so fuck he goat. fucked the goat. Boy, so fucks goats. exactly. So it's it was it was kind of a it was expected. I mean, Seattle is overrated, um, kind of in a way. I guess they're probably well. They're coming rated. back down to earth. Exactly. Is the uh, it, I mean, we kind of expected them to be like this all season, and for them to have seven wins is impressive in itself. But I think yeah, they're not a very good team. No, so and for them to be at this, it's point. not really fair to be saying like, oh, the Seahawks are or this and that. They, this is what the, we expected them to be. They're not a playoff team. They'll make it probably. They'll make it because of how they started, but they're not a playoff team. Speaking of playoff teams, they're not currently in the playoffs, but the Detroit Lions, uh, I I wanted to talk about them a little bit. Take a trip to MetLife this this week. I don't want to talk about them too much. They do take a trip to MetLife this week. You think you you guys are going to win? I mean, I think it's one of the more evenly matched up games of the entire entire season. Yeah. Uh, It was a pretty big game for both teams, but uh, as a Jet fan, I'm a fucking biased. I'm going to say the Jets... Are gonna win. You know what I mean? I think Mike White, after showing how fucking tough he could be against Buffalo, getting fucking rocked multiple times, my boy kept getting he back in the game. Fucking bro, killed. some of the hardest hits I've ever oh, seen on a fo- fucking football field. So. And this man fucking ate that shit. He ate him up. Yeah. He took a couple plays bo- plays off to make sure nothing was broken. And then he came back <laughs> twice. <laughs> Made sure nothing was broken. I'm dead. Nah, Mike White's Mike White's tough as he's hell. Him, bro. And yes, he's actually played extremely well for you guys. Too, Zach Wilson so. was elevated to QB two. Was he really? He's actually going to be yeah, active for the game. Active, yeah. Which would have helped out last week against Buffalo when fucking Joe Flacco had to take snaps. Would it have helped out though? Because we don't know if Zach Wilson's better than Joe Flacco. For being honest, he's better than Joe I, Flacco. I think he's better. He's better than Joe Flacco. No man, I'm, I don't give a fuck. Man. Like, he's definitely he's better, better than, than Joe, Joe Flacco. Flacco. Isn't yeah. 
But yeah, it's on really on the other team that in that game, uh, the Detroit Lions. I don't want to spend too much time on them because uh, I have a video coming out about the Detroit Lions, so keep an eye <gasps> on that one. Um, but yeah, I I think they're personally going to make the playoffs. I think they. I don't think they win out. I think if there's a game that they lose, I think it's this one because I think you guys are just a good match. Like you guys match up well against the Lions, so your weapons are good. Their secondary is kind of iffy at times. And, uh, of course, your defense is elite and their offense is what helps them win games. They could definitely run the table I mean, when you look at the schedule. They could, the Panthers are bad. Yep. The Bears are bad. Yep. The Packers, Packers are you not don't, good. You don't, mm, you don't know what you're going to get out of the Packers. Well, yeah. The Packers Aaron, could beat the Lions. Aaron Rodgers. Or Jordan Love. That is very true. That, I mean, it's the last game of the season. So I want to see Love Jordan Love very play. Much very much start that game. I really want to see Jordan Love play. I did, and I I think that the Packers are, in my opinion, like this is a poverty move for them to keep fucking Aaron Rodgers. Oh, oh what's cool, up, guys! Fire! Hi, All guys! Right. We're back. So, um, what were we never left. You were saying uh, that Jordan, Jordan Love. Love, Aaron Rodgers situation. So, I mean, coming off a fucking MVP, and you just paid him, it's really tough to to sit down a guy that you're giving millions of dollars a game. You know what I mean? It's different when he's 39 years old. You're out of the playoffs, and if he gets injured, no, number one, his yeah. trade value is done now. If he gets hurt. If there is any trade value, which I think there still is. And then number two, yeah. you also don't have any idea what the fuck your future situation is. Because, well, if you find out that Jordan Love's a good quarterback, at least you don't have to worry about one position, the biggest position, going into the next stages of your rebuild. Or you could at least get his value up enough to trade. Exactly. To, I yeah, mean, no, it makes sense to play him for it, sure. At least, and, and this isn't even a big enough sample size, in my opinion, at this point. You only have four games remaining for the Packers and stuff, so... I just think I, I didn't like the move. I don't like that Aaron Rodgers is starting the rest of the, it seems like it'll be the rest of the season or at least for most of it. You don't get a big enough sample size to see what Jordan Love has. I just I don't like I don't well, they're probably gonna get the Packers, fucked by man. the Vikings. I, the Vikings don't win games like that. They don't fuck I anybody. They're, I think they're they're definitely they don't better. they don't win I, games like that. They're just ten and you three. think Baker Mayfield just they don't blow anybody out. Beats Look the at their Packers. Records. Do I think Baker Mayfield beats the Packers? No. Hmm. I That's don't the think Baker Mayfield beats. The Why Packers. is that the fucking bro? They got to flex. Game. They got to flex something else. They got to flex. Give me Jets lines Monday night. Give I it would. To me. I would actually. Love I think to the Jets play on Thursday though. Definitely. I hate Thursday night games, bro. I think Thursday night games are the biggest waste of football ever. But I think this is the best Thursday night game. If the Jets are playing on Thursday, you said. Uh, I'm trying to best Thursday night game of the season. Yeah, the Jets. Yeah, are, yeah it's, the it's Jets, by far Jets the best are playing Thursday the Jags. Probably the best Thursday night game. I, of the season. I, I feel there like was, I've seen the Texans one, on Thursday night every fucking week. Bro, there was one recently that was actually pretty like a decent matchup. I don't remember what it was, but was it? I don't remember which one it was, but this, this, yeah. I mean, it, it's if it's not one, it's two. So Thursday night games have been shit this year, bro. It was the. I mean, last week it was the Rams Raiders. It's, a, it's not good. No, uh, make I it. Mean, that was a pretty good. Game. It was a. It was a good game. It was a good game, especially but what Baker did. Not with teams that. It's are not teams that are actually competitive. Yes, like week before was the Bills Patriots. That's, that's a that, good one. That was that's a, a competitive. Those a were competitive teams. Game. It's a division game. It didn't end up being a close game, but those were competitive teams. So therefore, it was like you looked at that and you were like, "Oh, okay." In terms of scheduling, decent... the game itself, we could argue about. But... Yes, exactly. But this will probably be the best. Thursday night football game of the entire season. If I'm being completely honest. Next week is a Cowboys Titans. Imagine, okay, imagine a world where Mike White gets destroyed, taking out the game. Here comes Zach Wilson. Jesus Christ. Out the tunnel. Savior. Tunnel? Why is he coming out the tunnel now? Because he was was waiting. He didn't walk in. (laughs) No, yeah. He didn't walk in. He was embarrassed on the sideline. Anyway, through the tunnel, he walks in. Number two, Zach Wilson. MetLife's Bowen. Boo. Boo. My boy puts his fucking Anakin Skywalker mask on. Or his Darth Vader. I don't think he should play with a mask. And my boy dots up the Lions, 
comes out Thursday night, fucks the guy who got drafted one spot above him in Trevor Lawrence and reclaims his spot as starter of the, of the New York Jets. Wait, so you guys are playing the the Jaguars? Dots them up Thursday night. Yo, Goes seventeen for eighteen. I would love yards. to see Zach Wilson play. No, no disrespect to Zach Wilson, but no, I'd love disrespect. to see him play Sorry, Trevor God. Lawrence and, disrespect. and then okay. get fucking killed by Trevor Lawrence to show that there's such a sizable gap between what Zach Wilson is and what Trevor Lawrence currently is. And I would love to see that. You're praying on this man's downfall? I'm not praying on Zach's you downfall. It, are, it very much sounds like you're praying on his downfall. My boy's uh, just a just a uh, cocky. I want to see. Christian man. It does. I kind of want to close the door. I'm not going to lie. Um, Mike White. I want to see Mike White succeed. I don't want to fucking see. No, Mike I don't White's, need to see the Mike number White's, two overall I, Mike pick White's succeed. the better story for sure. 100%. Exactly. 100%. I don't I need just, to see the number two overall just, pick succeed. That would be the greatest 30 for 30 of all time. <laughs> One of. No, it's not. It would be. <laughs> it literally wouldn't be. But, yeah, I mean, that's what I got. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Lions. <laughs> and, obviously, we talked a little bit about the Jets. Jared Goff, man. Shout out Jared Goff. Fucking baller, bro. Yeah, no, nah, he's, he's Jared really, Goff is a baller. He's been showing why he was the fucking number one pick. And he's been to a Super Bowl, too. I think not enough people talk about that. No, you people forget about that. That was before the Rams were, like, very good. No, it was it – was, they were a very good team at that time. They were, but they weren't complete. They weren't – this team that we just saw last year, right, right? But they were really fucking good. Like, yeah, no, yeah. They I had just, Robert Woods. They had Brandon Cooks. They were a solid squad. I mean, I mean, Todd Gurley back in the day, C.J. Anderson. I'm pretty sure that was his. Uh, yeah, he went on a tear that playoff run. Fucking C.J. Anderson. Um, Jerry Goff. said, credit. "Let's go to the game." The Jet game. Yeah. Ah, fuck. I have a. I have a work party. I'm broke. Not work party. I have work. I'm working a party. Oh, okay. And it's the owners. Yeah, go make money rather than spend money. The owners are coming in for a party, and I'm working it, bro. Yeah. Bro, they're like billionaires. Nice. Shout out the Hess family. Love you guys. I got <laughs> cut from home, bro, yesterday. Did you? I had work at 5. Short A texted me at 3.20 and said, yeah, I'm going to have to cut you for tonight, but come in tomorrow morning. I said, what? Who do, who do they keep on? Sal. <laughs> I was a bus boy. In Classic. Yesterday. Oh, yeah, nice. Nah, she was like, I mean, you come in tomorrow? I was like podcast i could come at 1 30 thinking she would be like oh no nah, i'll get someone else never responded right and she was like nah i'm coming at 1 30 oh that's fucking nice know, so i'm going well, she needs you to prep right no um that she has like 25 teachers coming and she had someone else on the schedule who couldn't show up so that's fucking wild. now instead of them finding a cover she found a cover in me but if it was me i just the people are coming in at three so rather than finding someone new for the Just morning, have the night person come, come in early. early. Like, whoa. Yeah, I mean, I, it doesn't make much sense, but what a it is what it rocket is. Rocket science. Chris, you got any takeaways from uh, the past week in the NFL? Any teams you want to talk about a little bit? Two of them. It's falling off the rails. I, mean, I think he'll be falling fine. Falling off the rails. He had two bad games. So like, I just. Joe, I remember you like said they Joe were Burrow. Super Bowl contender. They're still a Super Bowl contender. Joe mind. Burr. I disagree with that. Still, Burr. I just. I know you disagree with it, but it's my opinion. So I think they're a Super Bowl contender. <laughs> um, yeah. That's fair. All right. Two has been mid, but he'll bounce back. Teams are like, learning how to defend him, too, a little bit. Okay, and you, you could have said the, the same field. thing after week one about Joe Burrow. He, no, 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 but I'm just saying picks, so two teams straight. learning how to defend Joe Burrow week one. It's, I'm saying two straight games where you've seen that Tua is struggling because teams are taking away the middle of the field a lot more. I'm just saying it's I a agree. schematic change. No, I agree, but do I think he'll be the fine? Way, yes. The way football, yeah, the way you football You adjust works to the is, adjustments. Right. Yeah. I no, I agree. Cool. I'm just saying it it took him out of his game a little bit. So yeah. obviously the Chargers they got had a perfect game plan. Oh yeah, with limited defensive personnel. The, Everyone's the Chargers fucking are hurt. out out, right? Or no. No. no, no they're they actually ahead of the, the hunt. out of the Jets right now. Currently. Are they? Yeah. yeah they're wow. they're in the hunt. They're 7 and 6 right now. They're 7 and 6 right now. Charge bro, Justin Herbert is Far more than a social media quarterback. That is that. Fucking can't believe anyone was saying that. Didn't shit. they call Diop a social media wideout after this week or something? He said something I saw him make a TikTok. Did anyone see the time. mic'd up with uh, him and Bill Belichick? Yeah, Bill was, yeah, like, Bill was, like, Bill was like, I love you. No, no, no. Diop said, like, I love you. And uh, Bill was like, you too. Yeah. <laughs> Diop YouTube. like loves Bill Belichick. Yeah, bro. He Bill's was... going to trade for him in the offseason. The, pa- the Patriots. 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 <laughs> Patriots. I love you called them the Bills and I go, the Patriots. Oh, I didn't call them the Bills. I said Bill. 
We got bad news. Oh, my bad. We got bad news. Oh, Green, you're not going to be happy, bro. I, I wouldn't want to go in the bathroom. I wouldn't go in the bathroom either. Nah, it's easy. He ain't piss or nothing. Yeah, no, he, yeah, he definitely ain't piss. <laughs> it's definitely better poop than pee. <laughs> oh no! Nah. Shit. Um. But Damn. yeah. So what the fuck? What were we saying? The Patriots. The, the Patriots. The Patriots. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. D Hop gets traded in the off season. Obviously, like Kyler Murray is is injured. He's done for the I season. I don't know where the Cardinals Unfortunately, are. Unfortunately, uh, Kyler, get well soon. Praying for you uh, with the torn ACL over there. Have fun, but shipment. The Cardinals brother. were really good, and then they were like mid to good and now they're like bad and now it's like whoa well now you got these talented players on your team well, they dealt with a lot of injuries they did year. no but what do you like you're gonna go re-up and run it back again this is not a good enough team right i think even when healthy this isn't a good enough you can't team. just read i feel like you can't, it's not enough for like a retool you no. gotta fucking restart no i think it's a complete reset especially if kyler tours to acl he's gonna be out well, probably he did. he did yeah out next year you know what i mean he's like, not out for the season bro He's, you're gonna miss ten weeks. He'll, he'll be out for a, a couple while. months, right? You fucking, a month or two. It's ruining the season. Probably, yeah, yeah. Cole McCoy ain't holding it down. No, I think I agree. I think I it's mean, a complete. Nah, he'll be out here. for the majority of the season, right? So ACL recovery is a year. It Especially ruins. In the yeah, NFL, it ruins yeah. it, right. Sometimes if, if they're less, not doing good, they're not gonna play them. Yeah, so he's yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. probably not gonna play. Not gonna play next year. Yeah, I'm just saying there is a possibility. It could be my midseason. It could be a little earlier, even. I get that, but I don't some think recovery, be, some recovery. Some recovery guy. He's not gonna. Yeah, they're not gonna rush true. him back. I think either way, now's the best time to start trading some of your assets. I just don't think it. Like I don't think this team, even two years from now, it's it's not built to succeed. Like it's not. They they don't have young players. Their best defensive player is JJ Watt. Um, and I mean, JJ Watt's what thirty four now. Washed. 34. He's not washed, but he's 34 he's now. Old. He's compared to what he, he's washed. Obviously, compared, he was arguably one of the greatest defensive players of all time. So, yes, compared to that, I don't think he was ever that. I don't know, bro. 20 and a half sacks in a season, three time Lawrence defensive Taylor. player of the year. He didn't say the D back. He didn't said say, one. Oh, I didn't oh say, yeah, one. I didn't okay. say. What did he win? Like thir- three defensive player of the years. Yeah, not one of them. Yeah. Um, okay. And had a 20 and a half sack season. So you said D. Sorry. No, 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 no. Right. The. Is uh, former giant and Lawrence Taylor, yeah. Aaron, Aaron Donald's, Donald's probably second, yeah. But, anyways, yeah, I mean, Michael Parsons one day, Michael Parsons maybe, but he's about to get fucked by the Eagles in a couple weeks because he was talking his shit. Anyone see that shit with Jalen? I Hurts, really don't where think he said something the about Eagles Jalen are Hurts. gonna stop Michael Parsons. I think Jordan Mailata makes him his fucking child. You see that man sing? Yes, he's so good he's at singing. So good at singing. So good at singing. He's bro. really talented. Shout out Jordan Mailata. <laughs> I want to see. I want their Christmas album. Yeah, so I don't fucking think bad. Any offensive lineman in the NFL is making Micah Parsons their bitch. Nah, I agree. Micah's been quiet the last couple of weeks. Right, and, and that's game plan. He's that's quiet, game plan. No one's making him their bitch. I don't know, man. Mike is a little I mean, baby back bitch. You're just a fucking joke. Isn't that your, de- isn't that your defense 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 player in the league? just a right baby now. back bitch. Nah, what do you mean? obviously. Mike is my fucking defensive player of the year. He's a dog, but he's been quiet. Nick Bose is taking that over a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Nick Bose is probably the favorite for defense player of the year right now. So, a best defense in the league. One of the best defenses we've seen in a, in a, in a while, honestly. And so he's what, dominated the last few weeks. What's Lamar's injury like? Because they're 9-4. and four. He's uh, – it's – what is it? Uh, – it's not an MCL sprain, is it? Um, it's he's out for like at least probably two to three weeks. So he'll make it back for playoffs. Yes. Yeah. He's back for playoffs, but if he's, they get into the playoffs, they'll get in. That's not a guarantee. Why? What are they? Nine and four. Nine and four. Well, they're not winning the division if Lamar's out. Yeah, you don't Joe, know that. Joey Burr, bro. Come Joe, on. The Bengals. The Bengals definitely gonna win the division the if Lamar's out for an extended period of time. For the Bengals. Bengals are Christ. Bengals are really good, bro. Uh, Titans lost three in a row. Damn, they. I knew they were gonna. That they're, they're still they're gonna win not, their division too. I mean, unfortunately, they, they're gonna beat the Texans, but then they have the Cowboys and Jaguars, bro. I don't know. Well, no, they got the Chargers. Well, no, they can't win. Dude, they they're not losing the division. The Colts aren't winning it. Maybe if the Jags win out, they have a shot. But even then, I don't think that's happening. Um, and who the fuck? The Texans and the Texans have already eliminated themselves. In the Jags the Texans, can definitely, so. bro. Let's say the Titans lose three at three out of their last. What's four the Jags' games. record? 
five and eight. Five and eight. And the Jags versus the Titans in one of those four last four games. Yeah, and then they they play. It's the, definitely possible. They play the Cowboys, Jets, Texans, Titans. Cowboys, Jets, Texans, Titans. The Titans also versus. Oh Cowboys. my God, you could. Uh, you're not beating the Cowboys most likely, but. All three of those games afterwards are winnable games. Very winnable games. Very winnable games. And especially with the way Trev has been playing, which is another possible future video. Um, they can beat anybody. Like they're, The they're, Jags? The Jags, yes. They're, they're scary, bro. If Trev's playing like the generational quarterback we thought he could be. Besides this game, yeah, been, they, could, they could beat the Jets. They could beat the Texans. They could beat the, the I wouldn't Jets. be surprised if that's a trap game for the Cowboys. They could lose that game. They're playing the Eagles the following week. That's a trap game. I wouldn't. I, I honestly would put money on the Jaguars this week. Do it on the money line. I Do would. Okay. No, I'll put a hundred on the Jaguars money line this week. What? If they get smoked, they get smoked. But you, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. I'm putting a hundred on the fucking Jaguars money line this Amazing. week against the Cowboys. What ladies are watching. This It'd week. be nice if we had ladies watching. Oh no, Grams. Grams might be. Yeah. Grams. Shout out to the Hi, Grams. shout out oh, to the ladies at Tommy's the other day. My mom, my mom was watching. Yeah. Today. Jesus. I don't Christ. know what she was watching, but she was like, "I was watching your podcast yesterday." I was like, "Okay." I was like, thanks, mom. That's adorable. Yeah. Shout out my mom. She watches every one of these. So I don't know how she sits there and just listens to us talk for an hour and a half or two hours, but not even shout out what we're talking that. about. Yeah, no, no idea. No just idea. Out of support. She just learns, man. She she learns. She's starting to like sit at the dinner table and ask me about some things. And I'm just like, Mom, what the fuck are you talk? Why do you know that? So she just starts like asking about defensive schemes and she's like, Whoa. Not man. defensive schemes yet. We're not there yet. If my mom starts talking about that at dinner, I'm, I'm not like, even there, bro. No. Defensive Not schemes on what and what? In, what are we talking about? Football? Nah. <laughs> nah so you don't know the difference yeah. between a 3 4 and a 4 3? Uh, the 4 3 is when there's uh, an extra uh, line, lineman, not linebacker, right? Four defensive linemen, yeah. three linebackers. Yeah, that I know. 3 4 is three defensive linemen, four linebackers. Yeah. But schemes, yeah. nickel. That's, yeah. Mm-hmm. What's it? <laughs> no, we're not going to. Dime. Cloud coverage package. Quarter. That's what we're teasing. It's a dime. That was adorable. All right. So speaking of dimes, we're going to put a lot of them in your pockets because this week we absolutely dominated in our picks for gambling. Yeah. Well, most of us did. Most of us did. Most of us did. Me, Chris, and Trincali. Did you hit FanDuel? No. No. Me, Chris, and Trunks hit uh, FanDuel. And then prize picks. I I did. Did you? Trunks and Dan. Trunks, me, Trunks, and Dean hit prize picks. Me, Chris, and Trunks hit uh, Fanduel. So it's a big week for us this week. We've we've been hitting we're, we're hitting bets now. We kind of got a we got a, a gimme with the Justin Herbert for prize picks, and some of us unfortunately still did not hit. Yep, but it happens. We're fixing our record. Classic As Chris slate. said last week, what was the famous line that Trim uttered? Oh, for every cold streak, there's a hotter streak brewing. Exactly, like coffee. So we're like coming. Coffee. We're coming in hot. Like very hot. So here we go. What are we? We're gonna start with some uh, with our prize picks party mix for the week. Whoa, that was aggressive. Oh, because yep. Ortiz is aggressive this week. Uh huh. He's he's ready. I'm I'm fucking I'm stamping both of mine right now. Whoa, you ready for this? I don't think I've ever heard you curse on this. Wow. Fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, here we go. Ezekiel Elliott more than 0.5 passing, rushing, or receiving touchdowns. Austin Eckler, more than 41 and a half receiving yards. And Mahomes, more than 290 and a half passing yards. That Tony Eckler, T, that, guarantee, stamp it. That Eckler line's low. Exactly. Good chip. Wow. Big time, Ortiz. All right. So, I have um, big Sammy D, Sam Darnold against Pittsburgh, put up over 172 and a half passing yards. I have Jay Jettas against uh, Indianapolis, putting up 87 and a half receiving yards. It's a lot, but not for Jay Jettas. The gritty man. <laughs> the gritty boy. Um, Dean, show us your gritty after this. Nah. Please you do. You don't want to see it. Please do. I, I, and then I got Miles to. Sanders. They would love to see it. Rushing plus receiving yards, 78 and a half against the Chicago Bears. Okay. For As me. for me, I have Stefan Diggs going over 69 and a half receiving yards versus the Miami Dolphins. Not sure why the line so low. I mean, he had a poor week last week, but 69 and a half, Diggs is going to smash that. Justin Jefferson, as Dean said, over 87 and a half receiving yards. And lastly, Dean's boy, Garrett Wilson, wide receiver one, over 64 and a half receiving yards against the Detroit Lions. He's him. Garrett Wilson. He is indeed him. Of Mike Kosicki, over one and a half receptions. Sam Darnold, 
over 0.5 interceptions, and Dalvin Cook over 0.5 touchdowns. Easy. There it is. Simple. Boom. Okay. So out on to our second segment of gambling, which is FanDuel Fridays. Chicago Bulls money line. DeMar DeRozan 20 plus points. Luka Doncic 25 plus points. Dallas Mavericks minus four. Okay. So I got Kevin Durant to score 20 plus. I got the Brooklyn Nets money line. Against the Raptors, I have Pascal Siakam to also score 20 plus. And lastly, I have De'Aaron Fox to also get a dub. Uh, I was doing just money lines today because I couldn't find anything I really liked other than the games. Um, I have the Nets over the Raptors, I have the Knicks over the Bulls, Mavs over the Blazers, and the Lakers over the Nuggies. Ron, I got Trey Young, two plus made threes. Tyrese Halliburton to score 15 plus, Paolo to score 15 plus, and over 223 for the Warrior Sixer game. Okay. Tony T guarantee. He's stamping, stamping them, man. Damn. Two stamps. Two stamps. That's a lot of stamps. Uh huh. God damn. I haven't stamped anything this year. Oh, you don't have a nice rhyme scheme to go I with. Don't, it, you're so. right. The Matty J. No. Nah. Doesn't work. No, it doesn't nah. work. The Matty J takeaway. No. No. No, I don't like nah. that. No, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was a nice try, Dean. I appreciate you for trying, but uh, yeah. Right. But um, a brainstorm. Yeah. So uh, also shout uh, shout out Trunks. Obviously, he's not here. If you guys couldn't already tell, because you know he's not memorable. But, oh yeah, we didn't mention that. Um, yeah, who cares? Good luck on your final today, buddy. Hope we fail. Uh, hope you actually don't fail. I already know you. Uh, you really didn't study for this one, so what? I'm gonna put you on blast for that Trunks. one. Trunks, please do well. Uh, we're definitely rooting for you over here. Should we read Trunks' stuff? What he said. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, Trunks for today, for his prize picks party mix, he has... I like the way you said that. That's, that's some pizzazz. Thanks, bro. Thanks. He has a... <laughs> he has the Sean Watson <laughs> over 17 Stop and a half. Stop laughing, dude. Stop laughing at Sean Watson's name, dude. Pass completions. Uh, he has Jamar Chase over 80 and a half receiving yards. You're not laughing at Jamar Chase, are you? No. <laughs> and Jay Jet is over 87 and a half receiving Yo, everyone's yards. picking that shit. Everyone's picking that shit. And then for... <laughs> FanDuel for ride. <laughs> <laughs> for that, that had some um, uh, Trunks has Sacramento Kings alternative spread. Uh, minus two and a half against the Detroit Pistons. Brooklyn Nets alternative... Alt- 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 oh my God. <laughs> alternative spread against the Toronto Raptors plus six and a half. Nikola Vucevic to record eight plus rebounds against the Knicks. Yusuf Nurkic to record eight plus rebounds against the Mavericks. And that's plus 266. Okay. Shout out, Trunks. Nice. Oh, yeah. Mine was plus 287. Okay. Not that it matters. Plus no, 314. Mine was like plus 1100. Jesus. <laughs> My Damn. Bad. Yo, you need some wins, bro. I need some money. I'm coming for you, that's brother. That's true. You don't. Uh, anyways, yeah. So right now we're down to four, right? So in a bit, someone that's sitting to my right. No, nah, I'm I'm here. Oh, yeah. Never mind. He's here. Wait, you're not leaving? No. Oh, okay. Right. Yo, we here. All right. We here. We here. Let's get it. So All right. We have so that's plan for basketball. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the Did new number it? one seed in the Western Conference no. in oh, basketball, well. no, the Memphis Grizzlies. Ever since Sharon Jackson Where got back, they've been on a tear. Jam. They've won seven in a row. Jaron Jackson has been actually incredible this season. Bro, he's going to put himself in defensive player of the year. Yeah. If he has an or- – I mean, obviously, he doesn't have the games for it, but he's going to – He's fucking- averaging three and a half blocks right now. Bro. Yeah, he's averaging they, 17 points Since he returned, they've been the best defense in the NBA, yeah. which is yeah. crazy. He's shooting 37% from three, which is amazing to see. Obviously, he's a short, small sample size, but – you know, his three-point shot has been trending down the past two years, so to see him it's get it back up to 37, him. yeah. And you know the defense is going to be there. Like Ortiz said, dude's averaging three blocks. So he's been absolutely incredible. Jaw has been incredible. They're the number one seed in the Western Conference. And Desmond Bain ain't even played. Their big three hasn't yeah. played a game yet together. And so. what, to see what they did to, to uh, the second-best defense in Yeah, they in actually ticked down the books. I didn't watch the game. 41 fucking uh, points. Yeah. Yeah, Drew didn't play. 
um, which is it a 41 point difference? Maybe not, but it does change the game a lot. It'll it gives you Drew Holiday to also throw it John Moran as well as obviously Javon Carter. But Drew makes a difference. Chris Middleton still ain't back. He's played fucking terribly since coming back. His shot efficiency is not there as of right now. He shot pretty good last game. Yeah, but he's hey. had far more bad games than well, he has. Good. He shot one for twelve. <laughs> I want to see what Sully would say. Been I'm talking fuck. about the I'm talking about the game before that. He didn't shoot as terribly oh, the game before oh, that. I was talking about this one. Unless he did. Probably. Five for thirty. No, that's not him. But yeah, no, Chris Middleton has been more bad than good. He shot. Yeah. I know he shot one for twelve last night. Because I was, I, I honestly box score watched last night. I didn't get the chance to watch most. Yeah, of the I'm gonna games be anymore. honest. Did Jaron Jackson get hurt? Why? He only played thirteen minutes. He's just um, garbage. Uh, I'll tell you right they now. They could have been garbage. beating them bad to the point where. Yeah, I honestly have no idea. Uh, uh, it doesn't say anything. I mean, he only took two shots, so. I'm gonna assume, no. I feel like it would have been the top story. He also right had there. four fouls. That could have something to do with it. It probably yeah. did. It probably did. That's yeah. see. That's what I, I was actually gonna mention. That that's with one, that's one. Thing. That's, that's the that's, biggest issue with Jaron Jackson. Jr. Is fouling, he's especially always, at the rim. He's at the very, rim. Yes, always been a very good defender, but it's always the fact that he plays himself off the floor because he just fouls far yeah, too often. But that's something you just gotta live with. Yeah. Like obviously, you you would want it to get better, but he's. An aggressive shot blocker, so he's going to foul people. Yeah, reminds me of a young me. Obviously, you would like him to stay out of foul trouble, and that's something he can definitely improve on. But it's kind of something you're just gonna yeah. have to live with with them. The thing is, it's like pick your poison. It's either it's either he doesn't foul as much, or he doesn't get the blocks that he would get because he's as Chris said, he's an See, aggressive block guy. In my personal opinion, you can find a fine balance between the two. You don't need to block, although. Blocking four shots a game is fucking sick. Like, it looks super cool on the stat sheet. But at the same time, he can impact defense without fouling because he has a crazy wingspan. He's so athletic. His instincts defensively are so impressive. I think there's a world where he cuts it down to two blocks but fouls like one or two fewer times a game. And that's a big difference. And you need him on the floor in the end. Like, he clearly changes the entire outlook of this team. I don't personally think they are – even in the championship conversation without Jaron Jackson, but now that Jaron's back and they look like this and Desmond Bain hasn't even played, they're oh, arguably they're a championship contender. They're, most definitely they're contenders, contenders, bro. They're arguably a championship contender now. They so. can win the West. like, yeah, Bro, the West is shit. wide open. Uh, yeah, I mean, any team could you could call I a contender know. in the West. But so like, don't, get but away from me, cocky man. Like, like, they can win the West. Man, speaking of winning the West, day. what do we think about... I saw... Shout out, pick a side. Um, I saw... What's it called? I saw the them talking about the Pelicans. Just shut your dumb ass up, Leo. Whoa. I saw the Pelicans, uh, them talking about the Pelicans, and I was like, they were talking about whether or not they could see them winning the West. What do you guys think of the Pelicans' chances? Well, there was the one West? specific winning person the West? on that show who I'm not going to name, but he said it's too early to – determine yeah it's definitely it's so like, we just passed the quarter i see point. the point there because like we just said the west is completely wide open every team probably in my opinion in the top 10 right now i could see every team other than the kings and the jazz winning the west like let's be real the grizzlies can win it the pelicans can win it the nuggets can win it warriors, the suns can win it the blazers can win it the clippers can win it the maps can win it and the warriors can win it so it's wide open but it's Where would you put because, the Pelicans like, in that? It's tough because the Pelicans are every team, like I just said, is a contender, is a Western Conference Finals contender. Yes. But then you're going to have to go through the Celtics, Bucks, or Nets. So yep. to be a title contender, you have to be able to compete with those guys. The Pelicans, I don't know, man. Like, we haven't seen Zion in playoff basketball, bro. We haven't seen him play in the playoffs. Yeah, so. it, it's different. It is different uh, because you game plan around a player completely. Listen, man, they've been phenomenal. They had a tough L last night against they the did. Jazz. That, that was, was a that tough was rough L. L. I watched a little bit of the highlights. Still um, no Brandon Ingram. Najee Marshall, man. Najee Marshall played Najee extremely Marshall well. Najee Marshall is a really good NBA player, and I hope when they're fully healthy, they still have minutes for him. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. 
Dave Dave Trey Murphy guys. and Herb Jones too. Yeah, Jose Alvarado. Alvarado's probably gonna fall out the rotation, and Jose Alvarado's been fucking playing his ass off right now. Um, um like I mean, the Pelicans are right up there, though. You know, they're probably the deepest team in the NBA, in my opinion. Yeah. Probably the deepest they're team in the there. NBA, top to bottom. Uh, the you Grizzlies have, are up there. Grizzlies for sure. Uh, Jaden so Springer got a few minutes uh, a I couple nights like, ago. I feel I like all the teams that. Chris just named are. They're all, as Chris said, the West is wide open. Every any team that Chris named could win it. Yo, yeah. Dean, you know we're gonna do that together, right? Like you don't have to do it on your own. I thought you just said to have it ready. You I just told that. me that. You said, "Did you do it?" No, yeah, because I did it last night. <laughs> I that did was, not do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I didn't nice. prepare for that. I was up till fucking six in the morning doing shit. Oh my god! I'm, I was up. What I was you, up till six in the morning. What do you anyway, think? But... We were each gonna do our own individual bracket. Kind of, yeah. So no. we're con- this is consen- consensus thing. Yeah. But we only have four. We're going to have to argue it out until yes, we agree. Yes, until someone Happy picks a point. side. Yeah. So. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else in basketball before right, we get well, into that? Okay. The Nets the have been. Clippers and the Nets are two teams I want to talk about a little bit. The Nets, especially. Yo. They're like. Rolling. They're insane. The Nets? <laughs> the Nets? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. Nets are insane. Um, they look exactly like I had hoped they were when I called them a finals pick at the start of the season. So I don't think I still don't think they could beat the Bucs. I mean, of course they can, but I don't think they will beat the Bucs or Celtics. But fuck, man, KD's in the MVP conversation, and he's probably top three in it right now. They're back in the top four. Yeah, he's up there. He's been in, he's probably, in my opinion, having his best defensive year of his career, which is crazy to say. Yeah, he, him and Nick Claxton have been a devastating duo in terms of rim protection. Yep. Protection. Rim protection. Um, Kyrie slowly getting back into form. We all knew it, – it's been a minute since he got back, but we all knew the getting Seth Curry back was going to help this team immensely. Of and course. And Watanabe has been incredible. Lead to league in three-point percentage, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, what else? TJ Warren's back. You, you still yeah, would TJ just Warren. love if Ben Simmons was a little better. Just Ooh, a little better. Not even just a little better. A little bit more available would be nice. And just a little bit anything. more aggressive. Just, yeah. It's hot in here. I'm turning on you. Yeah, yes, please, please do. Bro. Just anything. Bro. Aggressive and available. He's just like a way. For me, it's more available than aggr- I think the aggression will come with availability, but it's hard to get back into you know form when you're when you're barely playing, playing yeah playing one game skipping two playing two skipping three you know and you know more so than anything else though they kind of do have a role for him where it's just <laughs> be the be the defender just play defense Facilitate play make a little bit exactly yeah. play defense and play make he gets to play this Draymond green role and play it comfortably to where you don't have to rely on Ben Simmons to give you 20 plus yo Draymond is wild c- could Draymond's wild what but... the fan thing yeah that was fucking. If happened? that's what he said, the fan, then Draymond, Draymond's bugging. Made, yeah, what Draymond's ha- what bugging. Happened? He got Draymond got a fan escorted out of the Bucks game when they played the Bucks, and Draymond was like, "Oh, like he made like that threats or some shit like that." But it came out <laughs> they said that the dude only said like, um, "You're lucky" or something like. Yeah, like you get a pass. You get a pass for yeah, what yeah, you did to Jordan Poole yeah. because Jordan Poole's from yeah, Milwaukee. Yeah. So, they so were like, oh, you get a pass. So like. The Bucks literally refunded dude for his tickets and then gave him free, free tickets. tickets another game. Yep. That's so, so dumb. So I mean, that's honestly a cool story. I got kicked out by Draymond Green and I got to go to a free game. And then went to a game. Yeah, that's you fire. Make, you should make a vlog out of it. You should make a vlog out of that. Well, I mean, it's too late now for the Draymond thing. But Getting like, kicked out of the fucking Warrior game. Nah, it, Draymond was a uh, bitch made for that one. And usually he's one of the guys that like nah, talks he's, the he's most shit and does all this and does all that. I love Draymond. He's one of my favorite players. But yeah, that was bitch made, bro. Draymond's that was bitch. very bitch made. But He's the other team about Paolo last week, we said Paolo could take it more than he gives it. Yes, Draymond, Draymond. could give it more than he takes it. Yeah, Draymond. Yeah, Draymond. yeah. yeah. yeah the other team that I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, the Los Angeles Clippers, who, when Kawhi has played, they're eight and two. When he hasn't played, they're like eleven and fifteen. Or something, maybe not 11 15, but there's something the like problem that. Problem is, they've only, only played 10 games. 10 games, yeah. exactly. The best ability is, is availability. And Kawhi slowly, he, he's not looking like himself yet. No, of course not. 
It's his first games of basketball, first 10 games coming back off the torn ACL. But they just look like such a different team when he's out there. And everyone just looks so much more confident. And everyone slides into these comfortable roles. Like Reggie Jackson doesn't have to take 20 shots a game and force up a bunch of contested looks. Like it just looks a lot more fluid. And I mean, my pick was the Nets Clippers. I'm not backing off that. They both look really good. They're showing out. They're when Kawhi is playing at least. Yeah. PG's having a decent season, not one of his best, not one of his worst. But I mean, I don't know, man. I, I still got the Clippers and I still got the Nets. Both teams have looked really good recently when every when everyone's been healthy. So the Clippers have like five, six guys that can give you twenty any night, single yeah. night. Yeah. My thing about the Clippers is Kawhi just don't look the same. No, He's he doesn't. Coming back from injury, so it'll take time. But same thing with Ben Simmons he looked, in a little in a single way. Yeah, Kawhi, but Kawhi looks like like he's fucking moving in quicksand. Less explosive, far yeah, less explosive. Very slow, yeah. yeah, far less explosive. But still gets to his spots. Kawhi in his time in the Clippers, Kawhi was always a phenomenal rebounder. Kawhi in his time with the Clippers up this playmaking game so much, bro. So you see it yes. when he's on the, in that Celtics game. And it's crazy to say because Kawhi is a superstar, so he shouldn't be having to do this stuff. But in the Celtics game, obviously he went crazy. He shot super efficiently, but he did all the dirty work, man. He gets a shit that, like he's a really, really, really underrated rebounder. I think he's one of the best at his position. He is, and his playmaking was really good. He's just like, oh, just go grab an offensive rebound, and it's a simple just kick out pass to the corner. But who else on that team was doing things like that? So it just. He, he helps more than he hurts, 100%. And once he gets his explosion back, they're going to be scary. Seeing him, his improved vision, too. Like, he doesn't make the passes that look extremely flashy, but it's passes that are more difficult right than pass. you think yeah, they are. The right pass. So it, it it is good to see him back, and it's good to see him kind of accepting this, like, role where he's like, maybe I'm not the same player right now. And if I do get back to that, I could add this along with that superstar yeah. version of myself. He's just doing what it takes to win. Exactly. You like to see that. 100%. 100%. And his game should come back. His his jumper has always been his biggest strength. His athleticism was never really like yeah. the biggest strength to Kawhi's game. Of course, yes, he was he had an unbelievable lateral lateral quickness. One of the best defenders in the league for a while. Is that going to be the same? No, probably not. Is he going to be able to dunk on a bunch of dudes like he was doing during the playoff run with the Raptors and a little bit with the Clippers? No, probably not. But he's one of the best mid-range jumpers in the league, uh, shooters in the league, if not the best, right there with Kevin Durant and Shea. Shout out my guy Shea. But DeMar DeRozan. DeMar, of course, up there as well. I think that comes back. That no, will I come mean, back. Yeah, I mean, you could tell by just by watching him. He's been short on most of his jumpers. He's still getting his legs under him. Yep. By midseason, I feel like that problem will be fixed because I, I think Kawhi would be in the lab working on his jump shot, getting that back. You would hope so. <laughs> I, I would I would hope so. But as you said, he's one of the best mid-range shooters in the league. He's just been short on his jump shots, getting his legs under him. Yeah. yeah. Still solid. He's built like a fucking truck, too. Like The dude will be fine. I'm excited. The, this Clippers team is, is going to get it together if they can all get on the fucking floor together. And uh, the Nets, another team that just – they're, those two teams are looking like they were expected to look. So, real quick before we get into this other thing, would you guys like to speak about the Knicks? They've Maybe. been playing fucking awesome. They have been playing They've been awesome. Playing really fucking good. Um, Julius Randle is looking like a competent basketball player again. I'm way more than a competent basketball player. He's, He's looked playing his way into the All Star. Fucking believable. And that's coming from me. And I've been hating on Julius Randle all fucking forever. Season. You know, yeah. we 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 bash on Dibs for not playing reddish, oh, which God. obviously still you know whatever. But they're winning games, so you can't really argue it. At the same time, you know what I mean. So the biggest change that I've seen, at least, and I think the numbers back me up, they're giving up less open threes. They're giving up less open corner threes. They're giving up less threes in general because they're running teams off the three point line. And the biggest change to the rotation. The tips is made, and I will give him a lot of credit for this one. If you don't fucking play defense, Deuce. you're not fucking playing. So Derrick Rose has fallen completely out of the rotation. Miles McBride has entered the rotation. And while, no, his offensive game isn't elite by any means. It's he's a zero. Un- yeah, uh, of course. But he's unbelievable defensively. He'll pick you up 94, and he's making you work. And by the time you get that ball over, there's 16 seconds left on the shot clock. So 
same thing with Quentin Grimes. Fucking love Quentin Grimes, man. That I I didn't want us to trade him, and I'm glad we didn't. So it's super nice to see him obviously showing his ass with his offensive game too. Like that is something that obviously he showed it at Houston, but he wasn't really showing it in the NBA. And now look at this. The guy's having, what was it, a 34-point game not too long ago? Like he, Quentin Grimes is a baller, and I'm happy that we have him. Obviously, Julius Randle has looked far more engaged defensively too, which I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know what switch, what what flip switched, uh, what switch flipped. There, there we go. Switch flipped. Um, but yeah, after that Mavs game where we got embarrassed, things have uh, quite obviously changed, and I'm happy to see it. So, yeah, hope you they, guys have had the best defense over your five game win streak, like by a wide margin. And like you said, Deuce McBride's been incredible. Quentin Grimes has been literally phenomenal, dude. He's <laughs> yeah. like he's low key playing his way onto an all defensive team. Like oh, he's yeah. been that good, Quentin Grimes. So and he has an offensive game, so, which know, is I mean gonna be tapped into a the Knicks bit also more. have I don't, know, I don't know about an offensive teams, game. He's a good shooter, but like he's got some off the dribble stuff to him. He showed it at Houston too. There's potential there. I think there's more than what Quentin Grimes has shown to this point. And he was a five star recruit. Like, of course, that doesn't mean much, but like, the potential's there. Quentin Grimes can be. T. Higgins was a five star basketball recruit over Trey Young, right? Yeah. Mm. T. Higgins would have been a superstar in the NBA. <laughs> nah, I'm playing, but I mean, he could have been. It is fun to it, it is fun to watch the Knicks actually playing like a good basketball team, which is is really nice to see. The three pointer still ain't exactly falling for most for most of the players on this team, but you know, shit. Uh, it's it just, just, I'm just happy to see them competing defensively. I'm a Debbie Downer when it comes to the Knicks. I don't like the Knicks. It doesn't seem sustainable to me at all. So whatsoever. that's fine. And I, I get that because, as you've said in the past, we don't have that guy. We don't have the one guy that it's like. Well, it's not even about that. It's just we know who Julius Randle is. It, the best. Do we see what Brunson <laughs> did to Alex Caruso? Yeah. Yeah. God damn. Drop that man. <laughs> Drop that man and hit the dagger. That was Crusoe dropped McBride in that game though. Also. I know. So, I know. Yeah. But Jalen Brunson got him back. Um Jalen Brunson's cool. Trunk said know. we're winning it all. Jalen Brunson equals dad. It just uh, doesn't work. seem sustainable to me. I think No, it's not I, mean, I agree. I don't it's think gonna get to a point where Deuce McBride like is unplayable. Not unplayable, but, he but will get his played minutes off aren't like plus twenty, like plus thirty. You know, like him and like Deuce and Quinn Grimes minute. Like I'm sure over this five game win streak, they're probably like plus one fifty over the five game. You know what I mean? Those two together have yeah, been like, unreal. <laughs> like and their plus and minus is like has been insane yeah, it in has all to be, of these yeah. games. So I don't think that's really sustainable. The point of attack defense on this team is elite, though. Yeah, like I said. I mean, the Bulls game, like, it was a good win. Y'all almost choked it. We did. And the Bulls suck. The Bulls yeah, I was, suck. About to, I was actually about to ask, and I was going to say we close it on this. Do you want to even mention your team I'll say all? they make the – bro, you guys were running a pick and roll with Brunson and Randall, and we were switching it every time for some reason, switching Caruso on to Randall, and then when Randall got the ball in the post, we were throwing three guys at him and leaving you guys wide open. You know, it didn't make sense to me because Caruso and, was more than holding his own in the one-on-one yeah, -on -one with throw Julius one, Randall. Just throw one. You could throw a double. I, I understand throwing a double because he's smaller, but yeah. he, they were throwing three guys at him. Yeah, and it, it was bad. Zach Levine, bro, like, I swear, like, he's deliberately trying to lose games. Like, I don't know what his deal is, bro. You think he wants out for sure? You think he, I don't know if he wants out. Victor. He just looks doesn't, un unmotivated. He just, like, makes mistakes. Like, he just has these mental lapses. I don't I feel like it's kind of a DeMar thing in a way. Where it's like we run everything through DeMar, and then, yeah. and then it's through Vucevic, and then it's like, well, I need to go get mine. So let me drive and fucking chuck up this stupid ass floater from behind yeah. the backboard. I, I like watch that. I watch Rusty Buckets. Shout out Rusty Buckets on YouTube. He's fire. Um he was talking about it in a video last week about the Bulls, and he was like, So Zach Levine seems to always just make these mistakes at the worst times or take this terrible shot at the worst possible time. And he was like, But even he he even had the tendency to do some of this stuff back when he was like elite. And he was like, But the difference was he was dropping 30 efficiently so we can deal with that but he's like now that he's not even doing that and he's what is he shooting right now 37 from the floor like 37 from the field right now or something like that and 
you're not dealing with that. You're not going to put up with that shit. These terrible shots and all this, uh, all this fucking bullshit turnovers and stuff like that. No, like he's shooting 44, 44 from the field. Yeah. I don't know why. Oh, 36% 30. from three. Yeah. Got it. But yeah, I mean, Zach, Zach just takes his shot selection is, is that of a superstar when his efficiency is not that of a superstar. His shot is poor. His defense is poor. Piss poor. Yeah. Um, just no bottom. I like just trade everyone, bro. I completely agree with you. I think the reset needs to happen now. I'm sick of watching it, bro. It's not fun. Like even that Knicks game. That Knicks game got exciting for a little bit down the stretch, but like, yeah, it wasn't fun, bro. No. I didn't enjoy watching it. No, it was not. <laughs> so, but anyways, on to our main segment of the day for basketball. And Chris, would you like to introduce us to what we are about to do? Oh uh, yeah, I'd love to. So. My guy is over at NBA University. I got the the merch. The merch. You see the shit. Merch just came. So shout out them for dropping this sick merch. Um they did on their Twitter page. Follow them on Twitter. NBA news, the uh, stats, all that fun stuff. They're an elite follow. Yeah. Um they did this. NBA best under 25 long-term bracket on their Twitter page over the past week. And I enjoyed it. You know, the whole basketball community was kind of involved in it, voting on it. Um, They didn't include Luka and Tatum in this because... It would have been obvious. Yeah, Luka and yeah. Tatum are the two best. Even the other two guys on the top they're are a little... Include, they're going to include Zion and Ja. Those two are pretty obvious. But those two also aren't on... I don't know. It doesn't Luke really. But yeah, but Luke. Yeah, Luke and Tatum. Luke are and Tatum are clear. They're yeah. top five players. So, so yeah. all right. So, do you guys want to do this like bracket by bracket we and could. get the final four, or do you want to do the whole first round and then do the uh, whole second? Let's round? Let's go first round. First. You want to do the first round? Yeah. Second. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just so we can start get the more intense stuff say, afterward. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ease into it. All right. I hope you guys can see <laughs> that. You probably can't, probably but... can. They can't see anything on the screen. It's okay. We're happy if they see our logo. That's better. You can't exactly see it, but it's, it's better. <laughs> uh, you, I mean, you, you'll hear us it's saying fun. their oh names. It's okay. It's not bad. Yeah, it's okay. We're going to speak I mean, it anyway. We'll, we'll, small, we'll put a... Yeah, it's yeah, a small... It's not, it's nothing, small nothing we yeah, could do we'll about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Zion Williamson versus Killian Hayes. We'll post it. Zion. Yeah, but it's not I'm gonna gonna run, uh, yeah, I'm going to run through the first round. Besides these eight nines. Eight nines. Eight nines, and, nines might be close, but yeah. other than that, we're running through it. RJ Barrett, Jaden Ivey. I have RJ. RJ. Why? He is more in his... Resume than Jaden. Jaden Ivey's. We're not okay. talking okay. about resume. Let me. Okay, let me ask this real quick. Are we taking? Oh, long term. Yeah, that, I mean that is the best title under of the twenty-five long. Term. Okay, I didn't, I didn't RJ. see the long term. I'm also still taking RJ. I, I think RJ has hit his peak. If that Jaden Ivey still has so much more room to grow after what we're seeing, what I he's do. doing so far this season. I just think, and and obviously, I've also hated on. R I'm just a Knicks hater while being a Knicks fan, but. And I'm the first person to admit that RJ has been fucking terrible, and somehow he's still averaging he's twenty. He's picked this it up year. last last. He's somehow still averaging twenty years. this year, and and we're close to it, right around eighteen, nineteen. My thing is, RJ at what he could be, and yes, I know he's three years, four years into the league, and he really hasn't grown too much. He's hit his peak, bro. I don't think he's hit his peak. How I don't. I think it's insane so to either. say that R.J. Barrett has hit his. What is he? How much better is he gonna get? Because I know people who thought this dude was taking some Jalen Brown type jump this year. Like, what are we talking about? Well, you know, people. When bro. you say people, you mean Trunks. That, Trunks no, was I, like he's no, an all star. I, this I wasn't year. even talking about Trunks. I just mean people in general around the basketball community. But R.J. better win this thing or it's rigged. He said, and then he said Zach Wilson starting versus the Lions. Let's go. Wait, what? What? Zach Wilson starting versus the Lions. No way. Damn, Mike White's out. Holy shit, that's crazy. So, um, RJ, I just don't, like, what is he going to get better at? Other than his efficiency can improve, but even at that, like, bro, he's one of the worst finishers around the rim in all of basketball. Like, you guys watch this guy My, every no, night. No, no, I know. Stinks, My bro, thing is, finishing. In, and he shoots them all game we've, long. No, I know. We've literally seen... RJ shoot before I even get into the finishing shoot better far better from three like this efficiency is is not going to be sustained because it's so poor 
And in the past, he I think he had a season where he shot 40% from three. That was an anomaly. 38. That was an anomaly. But I think it's crazy to say that RJ can't sit at 36, 37 for the rest I of his career. I never said he can't do that. So, But that's that's enough. And I think that paired with the fact that... Jaden Ivey could be a star. I still think RJ can be. I really do. I'm still taking. But why game, though? That's but, what but I'm no, 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 no. Like if he's, I'll, if he's I'll, shooting 36 percent from three rather than whatever he's shooting now, that makes him a star. No, I think okay, that right. paired with finishing jumps, and of course we haven't but seen. Bro, it. we're he, talking about jumps that they have. To, uh, he has to take. Bro, he was the Jay worst. Ivey is one of doing the, this. Yeah, he was one now. of the worst finishers I, in all of basketball last season, and, and he he's arguably got worse. got worse at finishing. Like, what jumps are we waiting for this guy to take? No, look. I, first of all, I was gonna say we could How give it to Jaden Ivey. Twenty. Two, twenty-three. Because I, I genuinely he's love. 25. He's twenty-two, I think. I love Jaden Ivey too. I, I would argue for Jaden Ivey against ninety-nine percent of players here, except for fucking R.J. Barrett. Just because, also, my preference is for the potential of ninety-nine percent of like other fucking young players that could have been put in this spot, not ninety-nine percent of fucking NBA players. <laughs> but um, Ooh, LeBron. But I think, still, in my opinion. Personally, I'd take the potential of a 6'6 wing rather than I would the potential of a 6'3 guard. And I think RJ still has potential to be like the third best player on a championship team. I think Jaden Ivey has the potential to be the second best player on a championship team. He's one of the most explosive players in the league. The jump shot is... It's not great. It's workable. But it's not, yeah, it's I workable. Mean, all rookies struggle with that jump shot three games. He has a weak defensive upside as a point of attack defender. Like I, I, I feel like there's no there's question. a there's a yeah. ceiling. I don't, I don't, after after what RJ Barrett has displayed last year and so far this year, like I, I feel like this shouldn't be a question. There's a ceiling on guys that are that wiry in terms of. A there's frame a ceiling on guys who can't make a layup. I bro, I'm not. RJ Barrett hit his ceiling. Like this again, is him. Again, this again, is but this, I don't agree with that because twenty points I, a game is not a bad ceiling. By the way, I'm not. Did I say he was bad? But I understand that. But you think Jaden Ivey for in, can, in his fourth can years, average more than twenty points a game? Absolutely. In his, I'm in not his disagreeing with the fact. Season, yes, bro. Almost anyone in the NBA. I'm gonna be now. honest. Anyone so many 20, players right. in the it's fucking NBA can average twenty. I never. That's a shot. That, I'm, I'm saying that else. for RJ and for Jaden Ivey. Right. Like, that's to both of them. Anyone could uh, average fucking 20 points per game. 100 players that's in the right. NBA. I just don't know how you could take bro, RJ 100 players over, in the NBA can average 20 points per game. I just game don't right know now. how you could take minimum. RJ over a rookie who a rookie who we all know has elite upside. A rookie who, to most people, had the second most upside in the draft class coming uh, out. To most people. Second most NBA ready play, in my opinion. Not even about I, NBA the, ready, NBA just ready, about, no. but but about upside, upside, yeah, yeah, uh, right. So how are we not five. taking him top two or three in the draft class this season? Like there was an argument for him to be the, the like a top two pick. It was oh, just about shit. fit. It was about fit. So how are we not taking him over a guy who in his fourth season has arguably regressed? Like, that's what I'm not understanding. RJ isn't shooting. Like, I know you, the three ball can improve because it's been so poor. So like, you know, positive, it's only up. positive regression. Right. But the finishing was so bad last year and it arguably got worse. The defense is supposed to be good. It got worse. It, yeah, No, I know. So I know. like, what are we arguing? He's gotten worse. He's, like not so, improving. So you're agreeing that he's gotten worse. He's not no, he's had a me. again. Uh, he's had a bad season. But my biggest thing is the fact that I still and and look, this is a sure. This is a stupid. Oh, fucking we gotta way of pick it. someone. But, but I think we're the picking Jaden Ivy because okay. I agree. I think Jaden Ivy is very good. But I just personally would take R.J. Barrett. And I'm closer on Jaden Ivy than you guys are on R.J. Barrett. So I think we should pick Jaden Ivy. Okay. Okay. Jaden Ivy, let's go. You made it, buddy. Okay, Scotty Barnes over Herb Jones. Bef Bef yeah, I'm Scotty, so yeah. sorry. Before we move on, Mike White was not cleared by the doctors. Wow. Okay. That's fucking ass. Sorry, Mike White. I feel better. All right, Mike. Detroit's he, winning yeah. out. Let's go. No, I told you what was going to happen. Detroit's Mike winning White out. Mike White was going to get hurt. Did I not just fucking say this? Don't matter. Detroit's winning out. Here comes Zach Wilson out the fucking tunnel. All right, it he don't matter. We're back to this. All right. All right, whatever. Jalen Green, Green over Emmanuel, Emmanuel quickly, yeah. Okay, Darren Fox over Jalen Williams. Yep. Swiper. MPJ or Kevin Herter? MPJ. Yeah. MPJ, yeah. I mean, I get why you say Kevin Herter, and I was going to say that one's actually closer than you think it is, but yeah, because Michael Porter Jr. is never on the fucking court, but his potential is so unbelievable. I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about who I would rather have on my team long term, I'd rather have a guy who plays, plays basketball. basketball. Yeah, yeah, but Michael Ward. I'm here. taking the possibility of a six ten twenty five. Right, Jabari Smith score. Jr. or Jaden McDaniels. Jabari. Jabari. Mm-hmm. And I love Jaden. Tyrese. Yep. yep. Sorry, Danny. Trey Young over Josh Green. Yep. yep. I'm taking Shaden Sharp. Me over too. Keegan Murray. I am taking Shaden on Sharp over Keegan Murray. I took Keegan Murray when I was looking at my bracket. This one was close. This one was pretty much a coin toss, in my opinion. I just went with Keegan Murray. That's fair. Dean? Shade on Sharp. Keegan Murray. Uh, Keegan Murray. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this this might not go well. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you were in the new. <laughs> so, why Keegan Murray? Hold on. I have stats somewhere in here. It Stats will mean shit. Keegan I Murray, you could that. argue, is a guy who almost He's already going... hit his ceiling. I what, agree with that. How, like, I mean, no, it's he'll be better than with this. The other guy. But, like, how much better are you going to get? Shaden Sharp is a potential – like, his potential is superstar. Bro, I I was about to say the same damn thing. I like, see, Keegan like, Murray is a solid potential. NBA player for sure. How many He's potential gonna have a... superstars are there in the NBA? There's the potential, like, ceiling. There's a lot of them. How? Because we're going off. Potential. How many superstars are there in the league? Seven, eight. We're not saying all these guys are going to hit, I, okay, but I'd rather out, take out. a shot on a potential. Not everybody's superstar. a superstar. Time out. No, I'm no, not no. saying there's more than superstar. seven or eight superstars. I'd say there's superstar, and then there's just you can win it. Your championship contender by yourself. That's how I put it. I think there's 15 to 18 superstars. Maybe not 15 to 18, but 15 superstars in the NBA right now. I could. I feel like I would say. And then there's six. Mega that I'd say stars. you're a champion. What happened? Mega stars. So, yes, so you think you the go. 15 come after the six, or is the 15 including the six? 15 is including the six. So there's nine other superstars in the NBA outside so of the. He has a Jaden Sharp has a potential to be a top six, six super league. duper star. Bro, I mean, I mean if yeah. you see what he's doing right now, it's not out of the realm of possibility. He has elite shot creation ability. He has elite athleticism. Like I don't Which know what else adds to ask. defensive potential. Yeah, I don't know what else you could ask for in terms of potential. From he's the two already guard. shooting the three ball pretty fucking well, and his jumper looks incredibly smooth. So, ah, bro, I don't know, man. The, of course, I'll, the playmaking would have to take a jump, but that's a, that's as you grow. I just like Keegan I said, Murray. No, like no, Keegan no. Murray. I think is going to have a great NBA career, but I also will argue for Keegan Murray just for the sake of arguing for Keegan Murray, like. Keegan Murray, this is this is a bad version of Keegan Murray right now. And obviously well, he's, he's a been rookie. great the past five games. I know, but the, we can't ignore the first 22 or two. No, I know. I'm just saying. So his three point shot will be, I think, over 40 percent for a for a majority of his career. His defensive ability is more instincts based than anything else. And he will be a good defender in the NBA. He has more shot creation, not, more so in the in the in, on the low block. He's he's been a, a good shot creator in college at least, and it doesn't always translate All to right, the NBA. So, but yeah, Keegan Murray's a, a baller, but Shade on Sharp is clear, bro. Okay, Eight Jared now. Allen over Markel Fultz. Yep. Yeah, Desmond Markel Bain. just ha- just Desmond had a Bain. crazy game a couple nights yeah. ago. Desmond, Desmond Bain, Bain over Trey, Trey Jones. Jones. DG Garland. Yep. Shout out Nick Bones. Mathern over Trey Murphy. Yes. Yeah. That one hurt. I like Trey a lot. Bowl Bowl or Keldon Johnson? I'm I taking bowl, Keldon. Bowl. I took Bowl Bowl. Oh, God. Come, come on, on bro. Look what he's doing, come bro. On. Go- Look, Look at, at what the Keldon's moves. doing, Keldon. bro. It's Keldon. Like, it's Keldon. Come on. Now we're 2 2 again, so we have to argue. Yeah. Why Bowl Bowl? I just think what he's been doing, after not getting a shot with the Nuggets, what he's doing this season shooting. What sixty percent from the field, doing what he's doing, very versatile, being that big and doing what he could do, bring the ball. My, my boy's said, bringing up the bring ball, the crossing motherfuckers over, doing a spin move, Euro stepping to the lane and dunking it. I mean, like no one else doing that shit. No his, one else. I have a question. His vision is for Dean. Are you taking R.J. Barrett long term or Bull Bull? R.J. Barrett. That's wild, bro. What? That's wild. I feel like that one's. Far closer than it would be for, I mean, far, no, farther apart for no, RJ Barrett versus Bobo. I think is. Keldon is better than RJ. Oh, I take Keldon over right, RJ. That's what I'm saying. So he's taking Bobo over Keldon, but RJ over Bobo. I think that's wild. So, in effect, RJ greater than Keldon. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, well I they're not going against each other. No, I know. I'm just, I was just asking. <laughs> they might. But 
And then, I mean, Keldon's a we'll talk about it. Wait, Keldon's a perennial. RJ didn't make they it. probably will make it. RJ, RJ oh, didn't make right. it. So yeah. Keldon's a perennial twenty point per game scorer. He's an above average rebounder for his size. I just the potential for he's a, a shooter. For Bobo is he's so a much fucking shooter. Better than I guess. Yet. Yeah. I guess. I mean, sure. The potential of a seven foot two guy is higher than the potential. And he can, of... and he blocks shots. Like he's he no, makes he's, positive impact. He definitely. No, makes I, positive I, he's not just like a highlight guy. No, he definitely makes positive. Impact. I also think it's it's because I feel like he some has... of the potential ran out though. It's like I think he's it's, another guy it, where this is his real first opportunity. I know though, that. You know, he also has free reign on a bad Orlando Magic team, right? And I don't think he gets that. And there's to also going to be a pecking order in that Orlando match. But he's also sitting next to all these guys who are top picks that also well, get he was going to be a top pick. He yeah. wasn't, though. No, but he was going mm-hmm. to be a top five pick. I just think he's another Nobody guy wasn't. who, in my opinion, no, like, yeah, yeah. like, is Bobo really going to be, like, better than what he's being right now? That's what Why I not, think, too. Though? We're two months into a season where he's getting his first opportunity. That's fair. I'll give you know what I'll give it to you. I'll he's go dropping Bobo. twenty yeah, points. I, I do think Bobo. Well, no, I mean, he's averaging like twelve points. No, but I'm saying Kelvin Kelvin Johnson averages twenty points. more. Yeah, <laughs> but I'll go Bobo. Bo. On we don't have to. That's, that's no, wild, I feel you. Man. The potential hurts, for Bobo. bro. That hurts. Kelvin Johnson's hurts. another guy. It's who the, is the, in the idea RJ. of Bobo. Bo. Yeah. yeah, he's in the RJ boat for me. Like, how much better is Kelvin Johnson getting? No, I agree with how much better can he get, but he's already so goddamn good that it's like, yeah, I feel you. All right. Power over Jeremy so long? Yeah, yep. obviously. Yeah. Okay. Cade over on Yekka. Wade, yep. <laughs> AJ Griffin Onyeka. or Tyler Hero? Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero. It's Tyler Hero. I think Tyler, Tyler Hero clears. Hero. My, I like my AJ twin, Griffin. Too. I, 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 I actually said I, I thought AJ, about this. One, I want to put it like this. I think AJ Griffin long term can affect winning more than Tyler Hero can affect winning. I think we. Under we undervalue how good Tyler here. Yeah. No, he is really good. I just think AJ Griffin like Tyler Hero have a have, very. Good... I agree, he's gonna have a very good career. But Tyler Hero is a perennial All Star. He's playing the last like five games. He's playing. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He's averaging like 30, 35. He dropped fucking thirty nine last night. Yeah. So. Um. You're meaning yeah, Andre Aiden over Jalen Duran, in my personal opinion. But I, I can see where you. I could. I was about to say. I could see I'm, where you get. I'm taking Aiden. I think Jalen Duran's ceiling is. What DeAndre Ayton is now? No. They're two completely different players. DeAndre Ayton. In terms of numbers, I see what he's saying. Yeah, I, I mean. But Jalen Duran has better. Jay, DeAndre Ayton's an offensive center. Jalen Duran is a defensive force. They're like, they're two completely different players. But numbers wise, Ayton isn't averaging what you think, what everyone would think he's averaging. He's only averaging about 15 and right. 11. I, Right, which I think Jalen Duran can average, and I think, but I, I know, think but offensively, that's his ceiling in terms of offense. Right, and Jalen Duran could be a defensive player of the year. But what I'm saying is, DeAndre Ayton has the potential to be far more than this offensively, while also being Does an above he? average defense. Yes, bro, I think so. I absolutely think so. Which is why he's shown I, he could be like dominant. He just hasn't beat the soft allegations. No, he hasn't. He doesn't draw any fucking free throw right. attempts, bro. He's he plays like a bitch. But he's another he's one who it's it. like. How much better is your league? Right, you have to get to a point, in my opinion, when you're evaluating NBA players and potential, you have to get to a point where you see the line of progress start to plateau, become a straight line that you have to give up on the potential. Same thing with the RJ. He's arguably went like this. <laughs> I know, I get it. And I know he's a young player, so like any young player. It's tough could in the turn, NBA, right? When these dudes any, are fucking right, 19 any years young old, young player could league, turn yeah. it around, but like to rank it, like. We got to be sensible here. If he hasn't gotten better, DeAndre Ayton, to me, has been the same player for the past two and a half years. See, that's also a testament to the fact that he gets he doesn't get the touches. So Right, and he just signed a mega extension there. So he's going to continue to not get the touches. But I would personally take – it's it's essentially saying who would you rather take on your team? And I would rather take the potential of – the offensive dominance that DeAndre Ayton could possibly bring. Like, he is a very efficient post scorer when he gets the opportunity and gets touches. And no, he doesn't do it in the Joel Embiid mold. He does it a lot more in, in touch shots, hook shots, and stuff like that. But 
I don't know, man. Like, I, I still see that there's a player in DeAndre Ayton that's going to average 20 and 13 and, and uh, yeah, still be solid enough defensively. Fair enough. DeAndre Ayton moves on. LaMelo Ball over Sadiq Bay. Sadiq Bay. LaMelo. Tyrese Maxey over Io. Yep. Jaron over Jalen Suggs. Yep. Wendell Carter over Colin Sexton. Yes. 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 Shea over Andrew yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout out Andrew Demore, though. Anthony Edwards over yeah, yep. Poku. Poku. Devin Vassell over Gary, Gary Trent. Yeah. Yes, sir. Jordan, Jordan Poole over Malik. Malik Monk. Malik Monk, it's crazy he's still under 25. He's hoping. It feels like he's been in the league forever. Yeah. Evan Mobley. Mobs. Yep. Franz. Franz. Franz over Clax. Yep. Simon's, Simon's over Dort. Oh, I can't wait for that. Sangoon. Sangoon. Or or I'm Giddy. taking Giddy. Sangoon. I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Giddy. I fucking love I Shen Goon. I love Shen I'm taking I like, Shen Goon. Give me him all day. He's a baby Jokic. Giddy's been better over the past month. He had a slow start to the season, but Giddy yeah. is just like what he his offensive game is just mid. Like he's a great play playmaker, and he's obviously an above average rebounder for his position. But he's a good defender too. Yeah, I think it's six eight being a point guard, being able to. He just hasn't shown any offensive game. aggression, though, in my opinion. But I think when when you have guys like Shea and then who Shea else comes back and at some point but he's not going forward. Now would be you the don't time. have to. He doesn't have to be the, the sure, offensive but, focus. But now would be the time to at least focus. But it's like show some average seventeen on this team. Yeah, I I feel not everybody's a seventeen point per game. I agree. Scorer, I just though. think Sangoon is like Jason Kidd wasn't a fucking Sangoon could be like. Seasons where Sangoon could be like a top five Not center in, his first in the NBA. No, I agree with that. I'm taking like this is long term under 25. I'm taking fucking Sangoon over DeAndre Ayton. Oh, I agree with that too. Right. So, so I, that's, I, I that's, yeah, I'm not taking I'm not taking Josh Giddy over DeAndre Ayton. No, I know. I'm just saying in terms of how good I'm just no. I would I would put how good I think Sangoon is. Yeah, I agree. I would put Sangoon Ayton and then actually I would put Sangoon Giddy and then Ayton. I love Giddy, but. I just think Shengun has, as Chris said, top five center potential, and even maybe even fucking top three center potential. Like he's that good. His passing vision is unbelievable. He's an elite post scorer already. He could shoot the three ball. Has he shot it efficiently? No, and he doesn't take that many attempts, but he can. There's really not much of a weakness to Shengun's game. I think he's his defense. Yes, obviously, as as is with any European center for the most part, um, but. You know, I, I think that could be fixed. That can be fixed. So, so Ortiz, who do you have? We'll just go with Sengun. Okay. I mean, you could say, like, we don't have to I, just go with someone. You like, can no, argue. No, I know. Him. I just. Okay. You got it. Ja over Pat Williams. Yep. Okay. Back over here. So, Zion. Nick, versus... if you're still here, time out. My fault. Uh, You said cap to something. What the fuck did you say cap to? So, just let me know in the chat. But continue. Zion versus Jaden. Yo, Dean, you have your little notebook. Yeah, you're gonna have to yeah, write I'm this shit have to down. Start writing it. But okay, so it's Zion versus uh, Jaden Ivy. It's Zion. Yeah. That's not yeah. even a question. It's it's Zion. I remember um, it for this round. So we, be... yeah, we had Scotty and Jalen. Scotty and Jalen Green. I'm uh, taking Jalen Green. I'm taking Jalen Green. As, I'm taking Jalen Green as well. Jalen Green's been special this year. Bro, he's his playmaking too. Scotty Jalen Green? Fucking hell, man. I've been really high on Jalen Green since he's been, since he's been drafted. Oh, I okay. see the argument for Scotty, though. I mean, obviously. Yeah. Hasn't Jalen Green been balling? Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's been fucking unbelievable. I mean, yeah. So Jalen Green. <laughs> Shout out Scotty, though. Uh, he's going to be a really good player. It is De'Aaron versus Michael Porter. De'Aaron. De'Aaron. De Jabari Smith versus Tyrese. 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 I could see no, possibly Tyrese saying right now. Right now. Jabari. Tyrese is another guy with that ceiling. But bro, I was gonna say the same fucking shit, bro. Like how much better is Tyrese Oliver? Yeah. Realistically. But it's also the same thing for Jabari Smith Jr. Jabari Smith Jr. ain't gonna be no superstar. Like no, Jr. no. Maybe. I don't think Tyrese is gonna be a, a superstar either. No, but Tyrese is a perennial all star. I could see make Jabari getting there, bro. I'm not going to – maybe not superstar territory, but 
bro, Jabari he's really Smith. Good. He's been phenomenal lately, yeah, ever and, since I fucking and called him out. It's some dude that. commented on my, because I have that clip posted on my YouTube shorts, and some dude fucking came and commented yesterday, actually. He was like, I bet you're eating your words now, huh? <coughs> I was like, nah, bro. Objectively, he had a poor start to the season, but I'm happy that he turned it around. <laughs> See, my thing is, right now, as at, at this, obviously, I think he's 19 still, maybe 20. He's already making plays on this type of a team that are winning basketball plays now. And, like, his defense, especially in this recent stretch, has stood out more than anything else. And I think, at bare minimum, I think Jabari Smith can be a guy that can shoot the three ball at a 38% clip while also being a very good, possibly even all defensive team caliber defender. And I think that at the bare minimum at the power forward position at that size where you could play small ball center too and switch on the guards, I think that's the floor. I think that's the floor for Jabari. And there's shot creation to be tapped into there too. And I mean, So are you taking Jabari over Tyrese? Is that what you're saying? I would take Jabari Smith over Tyrese Albert. Where did you go? I took Reese. Tyrese. Okay. So Tyrese. That sucks, but Jabari Smith, my guy. Trey Young oh, or yeah. Shaden Sharp? Obviously, Trey. Okay. People been giving Trey shit, bro. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> the Hawks are falling. Jared though. Allen over, or Desmond Bain? Uh, Desmond Bain. I'm taking Jared Allen. I'm also taking Jared Allen. Actually. We've seen the best of Jared Allen. Oh man, we've. I think we, this is also Desmond Bain's ceiling, though. Yeah, I don't um, see Des, Desmond Bain even at, hurt. I mean, that's a pretty damn good ceiling. It is. Yeah. No, that's what 25. I was about to say. That's what but I was about I think to say. That ceiling is better than. I don't me. think his ceiling is averaging twenty five for a full season. I think he can average twenty. As I said, most most people can average twenty. I think he'll average twenty two. But I think shot blockers like Jared Allen come and go. Yeah, I'd take the value of the archetype. I'd take Desmond Bain. Yeah, that's tough. That's close. Yeah, I'd take Bain too. It's probably the closest one I think we've done so far, if I'm being completely honest, in my opinion. Um, I love Jared Allen, though. Me Honestly, too. one of my favorite players in the league. Same here. Here we go. Darius Garland or Benedict Mathern? Darius Garland. Darius. Darius. Mm-hmm. It just has to be right now. It might change in a year. but yeah. I just think Darius is so slept on, too. But bowl bowl or Paolo. <laughs> Paolo. Say it, I dare you. Bowl bowl. <laughs> the potential. Okay. He's four inches taller. Tyler Hero or Cade. Give me Cade. Wade wanting him. Yeah. Uh DeAndre Ayton or Lamelo. 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 I can't wait for that. <laughs> Tyrese Max here or Jaron Jackson. Give me Jaron Jackson every single day of the week. Yeah, yeah. I would agree. I take Only Jaren. because of the ty- the team Tyrese is on. I, I also like, would prefer the archetype of three and also, B. Yeah, also Tyrese Maxey's come and go a dime a dozen. <laughs> I, uh, no, I agree exactly. <laughs> Wendell Carter Shea. or Shea. It's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Edwards or Devin Vassell? Anthony Edwards. Yeah, yeah, Edwards. Oh. Whoa, you thought about that. <laughs> yeah. If you threw Victor in this fucking bracket. He'd win. He'd <laughs> probably <laughs> win. You think yeah. so? Yeah. Yes. Jordan yeah. Poole or Evan Mobley? Mopes. Yeah, definitely have a Mobley. Here we go. I've been waiting for this one. Franz or Anthony Simons? Franz. I just value Franz more. Yeah, I, I, like... I I watched a video on uh, this guy Franz. The yeah. Other day. Actually, it was, it was yo, really pretty good. informative. It was kind of the... It this guy really killed it with that too. fucking video. Yeah, that he, thumbnail was he also was, very uh, fire. He's a real, compete, a real complete player. Sorry to spoil it if you haven't watched it already. Yeah. No, uh, Chris was the creative um, drive behind the thumbnail. I just made it happen. I just executed. I remember you texted me about it. I was like, "Yeah, we need a, we need a, you need to execute on that one." Plug it. Yeah, um, I'm gonna show you guys. The... <laughs> I'm gonna change up the thumbnails. Fuck our faces, honestly. Wrong with our faces. Nothing. I like our faces. Sometimes I'll throw it in. Yo, sometimes. ball game podcast is live right now. You guys should check that out. You Whoa. definitely should. Can we watch? Well, yeah, that'd be crazy. So we always have a viewer. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, this God. right here, yo. Check that shit out. Get my subscribers up. Only 25 subscribers. Could you tell Come that's on. Franz? No, nah, right? No. Nah, no. Nah. Cool. Only 25 subscribers, man. Just give them my basketball opinions. Feel free to disagree. Co-host of the Ball Game Podcast. Cade Cunningham and Trey Young Truther. Check that shit out, man. 
Shout out everyone who watched this video. 74 views is pretty cool. That was pretty. That video did solid. That yeah. video did do well. Yeah, thank you guys, everyone who watched. I appreciate y'all. Um. Anyways. Yeah, it's it's Franz over uh, Anthony Simons. Yeah. And then <laughs> Sangoon or Ja? J A Morn. Ja. All right. Back to this side. So now we got Zion versus Jalen Green. Give me Zion. 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 That was mad late. I was like, yeah, Zion. <laughs> this is a fun one, and I know my guy at NBA University. I don't know your name, All so right. I'm just calling you RJ NBA Barrett. University, but he definitely made this like this on purpose. De'Aaron or Tyrese Halliburton? I'm taking De'Aaron still, bro. I also agree with that. I think De'Aaron Fox is like in not in the grand scheme of basketball, but in terms of this conversation, because so many people would take Tyrese, and it just – Bro, it just doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't make sense. To okay, me. no, it so makes you think... sense. He's a 40% three-point shooter. He's elite. His assist to turnover is unbelievable. He's at least a solid defender. Tyrese Halliburton? He's Let's stop. The... No, no, he's bro, not. Let's stop long that. Long term, he's going to at least be a solid defender. You would he's think. a bad defender, bro. That's my same thing with the Tyrese versus Trey Young argument. Like, people are taking Tyrese because he's taller and think he plays better defense. No. Tyrese Halliburton sucks at defense. I Tyrese it. Halliburton, you suck at defense. <laughs> He's not a good defender I by said any at stretch least of the I think he's going to be a maybe, good defender. but what he's shown, what but is he? Of course, in his we're banking on potential too. I like, know. I'm just saying. From what but he's I'm shown, taking Fox. I'm taking yeah, Fox. I'm, 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 Fox so. I'm taking Swiper. Yeah, and the bracket that I made yesterday at 5:30 in the morning, I I had the iron in this. So. I just think the ceiling of Fox is higher than the ceiling of Tyrese Halliburton. I agree because Tyrese I mean, Halliburton can't guard it's Fox shit. Is what? Fifth year, sixth year? It's his sixth year. But he's already averaging 25, 26, and he's fucking hooping his ass. Off. 17. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I take Fox. I think he could. I take think, over yo, game. respectfully, like, More I so like Tyrese. Ty Tyrese Halliburton as a player, but respectfully, I think he's one of the most un overrated players in the yeah, NBA. That, that's uh, definitely agreeing with based on how everyone's been I think putting him so on this pedestal. Yeah, he is on a pedestal. Like, like he should never be in the same conversation as Trey Young and Darius Garland. Not, not right yet. now. It's a, not, it's not, a six. Not, not yet. Not I don't know about DG. It's a, oh, okay. yeah. Bro, I don't know about DG, bro. What I think I think about? Garland's elite, but I don't think I don't think that Tyrese is far behind. I mean, what is Gar Darius Garland, Garland is almost just as good of a playmaker, and he's by far the better scorer. Like, what is the argument? Darius Garland's a twenty-five and ten guy almost every night. He could be. I don't know what the argument is. I like respectfully. That's not know. that's not this though. So it's yeah, right. I don't know, man. No problem. No problem. I, I take Garland, but not by much. Right, but it's not a conversation though. Yeah. It's Garland. It's Garland close, yeah. clears Tyrese Albert. And right now. Right now, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. Chris Bro, it's too your, early. Uh, your pockets match your, your sweater. Uh -huh. Nice pockets. Nice. Um it's time to wear Trey sweater. Young versus Desmond He's Bain. All the Trey time. Young. Trey. That could have that could not have been an easier first round matchup for Trey. I mean uh, first round. <laughs> Third round. Just matchup. matchup. Uh DG versus Powell. 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 Yep. Powell. Give yeah. me Sohan. <laughs> I love his hair, bro. All right, here we go. Lamelo versus Cade. I'm taking Cade. Lamelo. Chris, where are you going with this one? You know where I'm going with this one. I'm taking Figured. <laughs> For, I guess, strictly based on defense, I think when it comes to playmaking, they're both very similar scoring. LaMelo has the edge. But when it comes to defense, Kate is all defensive second team. I, I'm going with Kate. Why LaMelo? Um, I just think he has a um, more like – Pizzazz. Star potential. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's definitely a good argument for it. Um, I think Cade could do everything Lamelo does. I, just aside from shooting, flashy. aside from shooting, mm -hmm. but Cade's an elite mid range shooter. Yeah, like, yes. let's not get that. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. But Lamelo's three ball is, is no, obviously, is better. Yeah. 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 Oh, um, I, this came down to defense for me. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I that's, agree. I, I I don't think they're far apart playmaking wise at all I, I of course Lamelo is the flashier playmaker and i'd probably very slightly give the edge to Lamelo in terms of playmaking i would too very slightly though but then it comes down to kids better at it getting to the basket a hundred percent and better at finishing at the basket when he gets there and then obviously he clears defensively not that Lamelo is objectively a bad defender just, just, really Kate is, defender. just Kate is a very good defender 
So no, I I mean can't argue that. But personally, if I was starting a team today, give me the ball. Well, you need a basketball to play. <laughs> Shea or Triple J. Shea, Shea. Gilgis, yeah. Alexander, Walker. All right, here's a fun one. Evan Mobley or Anthony Edwards? Mobs. Give me Mobley. No, give me Anthony Edwards. I have Mobley, so sorry. Yeah. But, but why Edwards? In terms of the bracket on Twitter, Anthony Edwards actually won this. Really? Matchup, yeah. I think I can believe it. So I think it's close. The situation it definitely is he's in, I think Anthony Edwards has more room to grow than Evan Mobley might. Evan Mobley's not going to get the opportunities that Anthony Edwards is getting right now. So I said that going into this season, that that was my biggest concern with the Cavaliers, that the Donovan Mitchell trade was going to stunt Evan Mobley's growth. And it's did nothing. Yo, what this kid Nick saying in the chat, bro? Who's washed? <laughs> what do you say a, underneath that? He said Chris only has 25 subs because he's a Trey Young fan from New York. That makes sense. Yeah. Nick, are you one of the 25? Yeah, not, Nick, are you, you one, better of be one of the 25? If you're not, shut the fuck up. Um... So I thought Mobley wasn't Shout out like it was gonna stunt his growth with the Donovan Mitchell trade, but Mobley's been incredible this year, bro. Like, de- definitely better than his rookie year. And so. hasn't been as good as I would would have thought he would have been this year too. I will exactly. agree with that. He's been but, great since the cat injury, right? Yeah. Well, right. It changes everything. And he has like all defensive themes, bro. Gobert, oh, yeah. he's, Gobert. he's averaging Gobert and fucking cat. Clog the goddamn lane for this goddamn motherfucker. It's really frustrating to watch. He's also not a very good passer. I was he, watching, he didn't really draft him to be a passer, though. I know, but still, like, you'd like to see some sort of playmaking strides, and it, it doesn't seem like there's that he much. He's a two. He's not. He he's not a games. one. He does. He's he does his job as a two. Um, but I, I could see the argument for Anthony Edwards. Obviously, like a six-five bucket getter, like especially at his size with all defensive potential. Like he's got that dog. He does have dogs. I just think Evan Mobley. Mobley all, has like, like KG potential. Bro. Yes. Yeah. Precisely. Like f- actually has like, yes, we said Edwards has all defensive potential. Mobley has best one of the best defenders we've ever seen. Mobley has, type yeah. potential. Yeah. Like there's levels to that like, shit. If you told me 15 years from now, Evan Mobley went on a run to win four defensive defense, yeah. player of the year awards in a row. I, I wouldn't even be well, surprised. But Edwards clears him offensively. Oh, yeah. Clears. Offensive's not a question. But, but guess what? I think Mobley's a better offensive player than well, we like to see. I have them both in my dynasty team. Well, that is kind of fun. That is pretty cool. All but right. yeah, nah. Mo, I'm taking Mobs. All right. Ja versus Franz. Ja. Ja. Franz. Ja. All right. Cool. Why? Franz, I value, as the Shields would say, I value positionless players. I value players that are positionless, like Brandon Ingram. And but, but Jaws already proven yo, to be one of the best I'm, point guards in the league. He's trolling, bro. He's it's not serious. Ja. It's Jaws. That's why I was confused. It's ja. He's not being serious. <laughs> but in a few years, we'll revisit this conversation. Yeah, we will. Yeah, we'll revisit right. this. Um, the lead eight. Zion Williamson versus De'Aaron Fox. Zion. Taking Zion love, love still. You, De'Aaron, but it's been clear. He's clearing after clearing. It's, it's kind of just at this yeah. point, we kind of know the outcome. But Trey versus Paolo. Give me Paolo. 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 Oh sure. wow, I'm actually surprised you took Paolo. Bro, he's a Trey Young truther. He, is, he tells the truth. I'm telling the truth. Paolo's elite. I was Powell's, gonna say Trey. Paolo is top five player in the league. Yep. Yeah, okay. Trey Young. Yeah. That yeah. That's what I was going to well, say. Right. And if the defense ever catches up to Powell, like he's going to be clipped. So the, play. So the logic that I like to cling on to is no defense point guard, little guy, not going to be the best player in championship team. Paolo That's might I be the best say. player in championship team. I, I think he absolutely can be the best fucking player on a championship right. team. Ja versus Moogs. Ja. You know, for that exact same reason that you just used against Trey Young. But I think Ja is different. I'm go. I don't see there being that much of a difference between Trey and Ja. I'm taking Evan Mobley, and that might be an unpopular opinion. I'm so. How long Evan is Mobley. it until you think Evan Mobley is the best player on his team? He's not better than Garland or Donovan Mitchell right now. He, but he's more impactful. The way Donovan Mitchell than both of those playing, guys. if he's there long term, I don't know if he'll ever be better than Donovan Mitchell. But okay, I disagree with that. So, but you ja, ja Morant, who's they could be, but like Donovan Mitchell is right on Jaws level. 
Like, let's not get that twisted. I agree with that. Especially, I this still think Jaws better than Donovan Mitchell. One hundred percent. But I'm talking about like They're on the level, same tier. Like, They're on the same know. tier. Okay. And I think Evan Moe, we could be on that same exact tier as them. I think he could be a tier above. I agree. I think he can be. I think I'll sleep on Ja Morant all the fucking I think, time. I don't think I, I don't think I'm sleeping on Ja. I think I'm just very high on Evan Mobley. And for all the obviously I've said in the past, and the Shields knows it too. I, I value defense. Um and Evan Mobley, like I said. You guys were fucking clowning me because in the beginning of the fucking season, I was saying the Grizzlies were a good team. And you guys were like, ha 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 ha. No, 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 no. I, know, I, yes, I, you I, I agree. They uh, never I said, said they that. were a contender. <laughs> I said they. I was the only one on this table that said that they were not contenders. I thought they would fall off because I expected Jaron Jackson to be out until after Christmas. And I still don't think they'll make the finals. But and I still don't think they could beat three. I teams literally got on this show and just, well, I just, just think, said how good they are. I just so. think because because Ja is the best player on the number one seed on a good fucking team. That yeah, I'd rather take Ja over over Evan Mobley. I okay, and I I understand that. I'm not saying you're Who wrong. You I'm take just, I took Ja. I take Ja too. Slightly. I, I I feel like it's slightly. Yeah, very slightly. Like, I feel like that's it's, not it's just saying easier Mobley to can. build a team yeah. around a. John ja Morant than Evan Mobley. I I see, but I don't completely agree with that because I think yes, while Ja is a system unto himself on defense, Evan Mobley is a system unto himself on. I mean, well, no, Ja is a system unto himself on offense, while Evan Mobley is a system unto himself on defense. Yeah, but and I think that Mobley offensively has a higher ceiling than Ja does defensively. It's a lot of. Hope though for Mobley's offensive game. But he's yeah. already shown flashes. But I think you could make up for it defensively. Flashes. You yeah. can make up defense. I don't think you can make up offense. I agree. I, I think Evan that's Mobley, why I take Ja. Yeah, I think you have you to have put Evan the ball Mobley's. in the basket to win. To win basketball. Right. I think Evan Mobley my, has. The I think team off, defense is more 20. important than individual defense. Yeah. Individual offense is more important than team offense. You know, as it is right now, like, like if I need to win a championship, I'm going like with I'm going with Ja. Evan Jad, Mobley, and I know it's long term, and we're supposed to account for potential, but I just like, I think I, he's going to average twenty. I've said like twenty is cool, and Jaw's going to average but thirty. That, but that's the thing. I know I could take twenty yeah, but the plus. Jaw could all NBA defense. You just said a hundred like, guys could average twenty. Yeah. Yes, I think Evan Mobley can be the second or third best offensive player on a team, but that allows you to then go get people. That are and look, John Morant. You need to get a specific archetype to put around. I don't think this team can currently, as currently constructed with the Memphis Grizzlies, can win a championship. I think you need a guy, and I'm not saying it needs to be Paul George precisely, but I think you need a guy like Paul George next to John Morant that can help him win a championship. You don't, I you don't think that's him got it. That yeah, I was gonna say, bro. I don't think he's that though. I Why? like Desmond. And then you Bain. have Dylan Brooks cool. playing elite defense. Sure. But my thing is, <laughs> I, I can make Off Evan the one Mobley, graphic that I saw three days ago. <laughs> I can take Evan Mobley and I could go get guys that could get buckets. And I don't have to worry about them playing defense. Yeah, but I can go get John Morant and just get guys that play defense. And Jack could be responsible for 70 points out of the 130 I score. I'm taking Evan Mobley. Okay, well, it doesn't matter because everyone else said ja. defense. That's fine. I'm arguing for Evan Mobley, though. And Ja's a generational Yeah, we can talk about generational. Ja's a generational yeah. point guard. No, like, so. Is he, though? Yeah. Yes, what? Bro. Come on, yes, man. Bro. Even, not, like, I'm the Trey Young guy, but, like. Generational, bro, bro Morant, come on. Like, like being yeah. a top three point guard in the NBA makes generational. Generational means, uh, like, yeah. you're doing things that we haven't seen before. Like, who have we seen do what Ja is doing? Derek Rose. Motherfucker got hurt. For one year, yeah. Like, and I'm the Derek Rose. Like, I love Derek Rose. He's my favorite. He's already better than Derek Rose yes, was. John Moran is better than fucking Derek, like, MVP Pete Derek, Derek Rose. Rose. yeah. What are you making what, faces yeah. for? Well, put your mic down. Okay. okay. All right. Let's move on. John Moran's better than Pete Derek Rose. Well, one, he, oh, he's a better playmaker. Like, no question. Derek Rose didn't improve his he's playmaking until later better on. Better shooter. They're both uh, below average shooters. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But Scoring? John Morant's a better leader. And that ma that matters. He's more vocal. John Morant as a leader matters. John Morant's one of the best leaders in the NBA. That matters. I think that's wild. In terms of the leadership, sure. But I think... No. Derrick Rose had it's one a, year. John Morant's averaging 30. different on the era. 
and it was a completely differently built team. And you can argue that Ja Derek has Rose... everything open for him. You, can also argue you LeBron put LeBron Derek Rose, prime Derek Rose, on this currently constructed Memphis Grizzlies team, they're better. That's just not true. Period. I don't think that's true at all. Derrick Rose had a very similar scheme yeah, I don't, fit. I don't see it. They had, had very, they no, had, no, they didn't. The, they well, did you had a have, very okay. explosive point guard. Time out. They surrounded didn't have anything by close to elite a very, defense. No, okay, but that's one thing. He didn't have shooting like Ja has shooting. It because was a, shooting it was also, wasn't a thing. Exactly, but that's the thing. We're talking about Derrick Rose and where he was in the era that he but was what, playing. What is Derrick Rose doing in this era that Ja Moran isn't already doing? I think he's doing more in terms more of and more efficiently. Of the fact that he had the efficiency that he did have, where the paint is For fucking constricted, season. where you have Joe Kim Noah, you have fucking Jimmy Butler who couldn't fucking shoot for shit either. You have Jimmy, Carlos no, Boozer. Jimmy Butler wasn't there when Derrick Rose won the MVP. So Don't the Grizzlies again. start? Yeah. Yeah. Carlos Adams? Boozer and fucking and Joe Kim Noah clogging the fucking paint. For that time, they had elite shooting. They had fucking Kyle Corver and Luol Deng. You still had Deng. Carlos fucking Boozer and Joe Kim Noah clogging that Kirk fucking paint, there? bro. Yeah, but... I mean, Kirk Those two are clogging the paint. Right, but what... So, John Morant is averaging, what, like 36 and 5? Like 6 and 7, some shit like that? Yeah. Like, what is Derrick Rose doing that John Morant isn't doing that's the cool that's what I'm asking so in Derrick Rose's MVP season he averaged 25 Ja has been averaging 27 last year Derrick Rose has never hit 27 points a game ever in his career well, Ja's I mean, doing that Ja did short, that last but... year shooting 50% from the field 35% from three Derrick Rose shot 44% from the field 33% from three it's as really I not just even... as I just said it's also a completely differently constructed It is a completely different team. game, but right. Game. But, but how could you a, go and say that Derrick Rose would be more efficient than John Morant? When like, what do you not. have to back that? I think because of the fact that it was more difficult for Derrick Rose with the lack of spacing and the difference in the game. John Morant would have went percentage. into the league in 2011 and still been a generational point guard, bro. I'm not saying differently. I just think Derrick Rose would be better. That's all I'm saying. But at what? At what would he be better at? That's what I'm you're, asking. You, you you're haven't answered he, the question. You, yet. You're saying he would be more efficient. What do you have? To John Morant just as athletic. Just as athletic. I'm not disagree. I again, I'm just saying I think he would be a better finisher with a more open lane. I think yes, that's obviously, just, obviously, Derek every Rose, NBA player. obviously Derek. But Rose, exactly, exactly, that, that affects Derek. efficiency. Right, his efficiency would improve. I'm not arguing that, but I'm saying, what do you have to back? I think they that are his the efficiency would be better than John Morant. John Morant is literally doing it. He is averaging 30 on 50 percent from the fucking field, and Again, winning games. I just said why I think it'd be different for Derrick Rose. Obviously, I can't no. say it is because it wasn't, but I'm saying I think it would be um, different. And I'm saying like like but your why argument would it be your argument? I could reverse it. Derrick John Morant would go into 2011 and probably average less points and a little bit less efficient, but we'd still be talking about him as a generational point guard, bro. The same way Derrick Rose was a generational point guard. No one's saying Derrick Rose wasn't a generational point guard. He was. But John Moran is doing it better. Oh, John no, no, Moran no. is more athletic. John Moran is objectively a better shooter than MVP Derrick Rose was. He's a better playmaker objectively than Derrick Rose, MVP Derrick Rose was. And the defense was hit or miss for both of them. Yeah. Like, well, there's nothing to back that Derrick like, – like, and I love Derrick Rose. He's my favorite player ever. But there's nothing to back that Derrick Rose would be better than John Moran. Nothing to back that. Fair enough. Agree to Cut disagree down. on that one. <laughs> um, Shay or, <laughs> Shay or Cade? I always just argue Derrick Rose. He ain't even involved in yeah. this. Shay. Shay or Cade? Give me Cade. <laughs> Come on, Give bro. Shay. Shay. Don't say it. Come I think on. Cade I'm has... thinking about it. So we want to talk about valuing defense. Shay's been ass on defense this year. I think Cade Cunningham could be the best defensive point guard in the whole but NBA. But Shay averages like 32. I think Cade could average like... 23, 8, and 8. I think and be but, all NBA defense. But Shea, when he didn't have this kind of offensive burden, was a at bare minimum average defender. I know, but I think, bro, we want to talk about defense. I think I don't think Kate is a generation. I was only I, of course, obviously, I love defense, but I think Shea in this, I think he can average 30 and also be average on the defensive side of the ball. Do you think Shea is averaging – sorry to cut you off. Do you think Shea is averaging 30 when the team is competitive? I think he averages 27-28. That's fair. I think he averages 
seven or eight assists because I think that tough. bumps up when he has a better team around him. Um, I think they're, and I think, of course, yeah, Cade will be the better defender, I think. But Shea has also shown that he can be a good defender. It's just he has such a crazy offensive yeah, burden on him. He's right not now. that bad of a defender where I'm taking it away from him because of it. He He's an average defender. He could, I don't have he to could he's do, a below average defender. As of this season, yes. I think when he has a healthy team around him. The I, Thunder are in, like top 15 defensive team. And he's been bad, yeah. And and no, as I just said, it's because of the fact that he carries such a large offensive burden. You've seen it with other guys such in the past, load. too. Load. Pause. But I, I just Play. that's the only reason I'd give it to him. I think with better talent around him, his assist numbers go up. Maybe his scoring goes down a little bit. But his efficiency could even go up, too, which isn't even out of the realm of possibility with better teammates. And then, obviously, I think his defense takes a step up as well, back to like being around average. And I think that's enough. Yeah, no, that's sure. I was just... Bullshit. Um, Zion or Paolo? Zion. 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 Ja or Shea? Shea. Ja. I have Ja. Ja. What's your problem? I didn't even say a word. You you have a face. You did a huff and puff. We you heard it. That wasn't upset. me. That actually was not me. Okay, no. what's your problem with John Morant? I don't have a fucking problem with John Morant. It really seems like you I don't have a problem with John Morant. No, okay, but that's that's fair. I was wrong about that. You guys corrected me on the generational thing. He's a generational point guard. But I think Shea is the is a better okay. I don't think there's a gap in playmaking. Obviously, Shea is the better all-around scorer. That's clear. And then I think Shea has more defensive potential. So we <laughs> say Shea is a better all-around scorer because of the ways he's able to score. But John Morant may not be the mid-range, get in my bag. No, no, no. I know what you're about to say. Get to the of... basket and stuff like that. But who well, leads the league in points in the paint, too? Or well, right. amongst Shea, guards. Yeah, Shea my boy does, is also on one of the worst teams in the league, taking every shot. John, and he's still yeah, shooting but, over fifty percent. So Shea leads the league in points in the paint, but Jaw's like right behind him. So that's like a and, stupid and, argument. And Ja has led the league and, in points in the yeah, paint. Yeah, and yeah. also like so. My point was, you're gonna say Shea is a better scorer. So Shea is a more versatile scorer, sure. For all three levels, it's harder it to scheme down, against it, it a comes guy down like to the Shea. Dominance thing, and it's like the Shaq fucking Giannis argument. <coughs> in a way because Ja is so dominant at what he does that it's like why does he have to even be better at why does he have to be able to shoot a mid-range when he could just get downhill every time and shoot a floater and a jump over somebody but yeah. you've also seen in the past like they're still can... both averaging 30 you know what i mean like they're still both elite scorers and yeah, yeah no 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 Shea's I'm... most definitely a more versatile scorer and but... John winning games John Moran's winning games. John Moran is a better don't playmaker. Do that. Yeah, I can did. do that, bro. Don't do Dean, that. Do it, Dean. Who's his best fucking that. teammate, bro? It doesn't exact. Well, it doesn't really matter. It, it, That's not Shea's fault. No, but the Grizzlies came out of nowhere last year, right? Or two seed and made the West. Ja changed, okay. changed, changed, changed the culture. Right. He changed the culture. Or did they? No, he's a leader, bro. For Shay, I like show me some leadership, Shay, and. He can't do anything about this team, bro. And look, they to, were just in the playoffs two years ago. The, the, the bro, don't there. act like it's the same team because it's not. Yeah, it's definitely not. It's not the same team. But, but what the fuck ja, is that argument? Jaws a better leader. Jaws ja is ja's one of the best leaders in right. the NBA. Jaws just, in my opinion, Jaws is just as good as a scorer. Like if we're just talking about the ability to put the round orange ball through the round orange cylinder, Jaws could do it just as good as shape. Gilgis Alexander, but Shea Gilgis Alexander does it in more ways. But John Moran is more dominant in the ways he does it in terms of getting to the basket. You could talk about Shea leading the league in points in the paint, and that's fine. But like, let's be Jaws right there. Jaws is that's fine. Jaws is a better finisher than Shea Gilgis Alexander. Like, come on, yeah, and like be. <sighs> Like, come on. Sure, yes, because he's more athletic right. and stuff, yeah. He's a more dominant rim attacker, finisher, yes. layup, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. But Shea is so crafty <laughs> that he still shoots over no, Shea's a great finisher, I agree. But my point is, like, like the sure, rim argument is, is... Sure, Shea is a more diverse scorer, but, like, we can't sit up here and say he's a better scorer when they're, like, both averaging 30 on great efficiency. 
Like John Morant's efficiency is fucking phenomenal. No, it, it is. No, I, I agree. I'm just saying I'd have a harder time scheming against Shea because of the multiple different ways that he has the ability to score. Yes, Ja can occasionally hit the three, but his mid-range game is not even remotely close to it's in another 15 to 20. He's going to catch a body at the rim. I mean, he... There was an old post. His hair was short. Yeah, yeah, He catches a million bodies, yeah, but... That was rookie job. Um, I just take Shea because of the fact that it's... I can't scheme against the guy that's going to make contested mid-range jumpers in my grill over and over and over again. As opposed to... <laughs> Jesus Christ, James Arden. It's as like opposed to... I could build a fucking wall against Ja. I can do that. And he'll go fucking over it. But, yeah, I... That's my own. That's so why aren't teams doing that? Yeah. Because it's the regular season right now. And I know we hooped in the playoffs, but we've also – Why aren't they like, – Time out. We've Gunding also seen and, – and I know you guys aren't going to like this argument, but it's a fact. We've seen that their team still wins without Ja playing. That's a thing. Yes, but – Shea Jack got shut down level. last year when they were competitive, and they then went and became the worst team in it's the NBA. tough – like – I'm just putting that out there. If you want to talk about teams, yeah, but like, yeah, but any, it, if we're gonna talk about teams, obviously better the, with fucking the John team Moran. around John Moran without John Moran is better than the than the Thunder with. But but exactly what I'm saying, Shea raises that Thunder team to a level of competence. Ja raises a what fucking competence? But to they a championship are what competence? Bro? Then, but they're, they're a the number one team, team without it. him. Yeah, and they're the number one seed in the Western Conference with him. with him. But I don't think anyone genuine like you guys don't look at them as a top four contender in the NBA right now. The Grizzlies? Yes, they're up there, bro. They're Why not? So, we're sweet. Everyone's so, like. But here's my thing: the Thunder are right now probably like the middle of the. Pe- no, they're not. One of they're the, not even close. Objectively, one of the worst. Without Shea, you're damn right they are. So <coughs> when Shea does not play. The Thunder are the worst team in basketball. When Shea does play, they have a level of competency that any given night you have to take the Thunder serious. All this just to lose to Zion. Okay, but what's the point of this? Yeah, for real. No, that is. <laughs> this is going to prove that he's better than John Morant. Yeah, John. Cool. I'm just no. I'm yeah. just saying though. Yeah, right. Like you wanted to use the team argument, I'll use the team argument back. They win without him. Okay. But there's levels, like Chris said. There's it's 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 win. it's all, worst team in the league to competent. And then it's playoff team to contender. It's not even close. I'd rather be a playoff team to a contender. Me too. Whoa, bro. I wish he, he had the too. fucking team around him, but he doesn't. Well, I'm just, you, you say uh, he has a bunch of fucking 10 year olds that are scouting with, right with now. With the Jay's same like argument. Bradley no, bro. No. <laughs> <Zion. laughs> okay, next round. Zion versus Ja. Zion. Zion. Yeah. Thanks for coming yeah. out, Zion. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Ja. Ja, happy you made it. Ja, we far. fought so hard for you, Ja, just to say, nah, Zion. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, man. my God. Before, no, the, before, the, season, I <laughs> before the season started, I would have taken Ja. Trunk said he doesn't like Ja yeah, and his Mark gritty. Henry. No, I love Ja's gritty, and I love the Grizzlies. I hate that people are calling them <laughs> cringe and shit. I don't think they're cringe. I think it's Yo, fire. it's all that Mountain Dew. Whoa. Like, it's just some fucking, I don't know. <laughs> this is crazy. I don't know. I, lo- I love Ja. He's really, he's amazing, obviously. He's a top 10 player in the NBA. Someone dude. took their time to Photoshop that man being fat as fuck. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of foul, bro. I'm not going to lie. They did my boy Zion dirty. <laughs> they probably spent like two minutes in Photoshop doing this. So, yeah, yeah shout Photoshop out to NBA job. University for making that sick bracket. That yeah. shit was lit. But had, we're I done with that? Debate. Yeah, yeah, Zion, Zion won. Zion won. Damn, All right, I should have fought for that. Did Zion. we expect anything right. else? No. No. Zion well, or Tatum? Tatum. Long term, Tatum. I have, I have to say Tatum. Tatum. Tatum, Tatum. or Luca? Luca. 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 Luca wins. Yay, it's Luca. Dang. <laughs> I think that was pretty obvious. That's why like, he wasn't here. But I would consider RJ. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, anyways, thank you guys so much. For oh, us. what the fuck? Oh my god! No, the over unders, bro. The over unders, bro. It's the biggest topic the we have right of. now. Hey. It's just uh, welcome to another weekly NBA over unders, everyone. Yo, please say it the right way. NBA career stats over under. Tell them NBA career stats over under. Thank you. <laughs> Starting off, Andrew Wiggins, career three-point attempts per game. The mm. line is at 3.8. Dean. Under. Over. Under. 3.9. 
Over 4.1. Great cool. He takes so, four threes a game. Well, you think about it. The Holy last couple shit. years in Golden State, he's catching and shooting mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah, but that's two out of the nine years he's been in the league. His shot chart's always been kind of uh, rough, even in Minnesota. Yeah. Holy shit. Right. Mitchell Robinson, career minutes averaged. The yeah, line is at 24. averages now. Yeah. Switch career it up on minutes you. average? Yeah. What is it? The line's at 24. I'm going under. Uh, over. Over, over. Over, final answer? Yeah, okay. yeah. final answer. Lock over, 24.7. <laughs> you don't, you don't got to guess. I know I don't, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> under. Under is correct, 23.8. Yeah. That's should have stuck with my gut. Yeah. I'm tight. Fred Van Fleet. Career personal fouls a game. A game? A game. Fred Van Fleet? Per yeah. game? Per, per game. game? Oh, Lines at 2.6. God. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were dying, dying here, man. bro. Under, under, under. Dying. Under. Dean says under? Yeah. Over. Under. The under is correct at six oh five. Let's go. Wait, what? Six oh five. Wait, time the fuck. Oh, uh, uh, it's the wrong set. Oh, my oh God. God. It's, it's corrupt. Yeah, well, the under was correct. It's okay. I planned let's, a backup one just in case. Go. It was the Wait. under was two. What are you waiting for? So the under what was the Time the fuck out. What did you just say? You said over 2.6. 2.6 and fouls I, per game. And I said the under was correct because the under was two. Okay. Okay. And my ass read the wrong stat for the other one. Cool. So Sweet. we'll just skip over that one. Oh, my God. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Derek White, career games played. The line's at 325. Over. Under. Over. The under is correct at 292. So what are the scores currently? I have two. Me and Dean both also have. Did you say under for Mitchell Robinson? No. Oh, so you have one. Yeah. I have two. Madison. So me and, yeah, me and Chris have so two. Y'all, All right. y'all duel it so, out. So it this did the come down to it anyway. I'm so happy I prepared a tiebreaker. Is there double points? No. No, it's, it's actually, just you This actually makes oh. sense. The way so, he did it. New format. The tiebreaker, if necessary, I have in, in in quotes here. Yo, we don't fuck with Leo today, bro. It's a Charles Barkley career offensive rebounds, but it's not going to be over under. I'm going to give you a range, and you have to guess closer to the correct number. Okay. The range is 4,000 to 5,000 career offensive rebounds. 4,000. 256 rebounds. Okay. Chris. <laughs> Say 4,257. <laughs> well, I don't have to give a number. I'm just saying, how, is it closer to 4,000 or is it closer to 5,000? No, you give an exact you number. You have to give a number, yeah. What? Yep. Whoever's right. closer. Damn, this is dumb, bro. I, I like prepared this. Prepared for this. I actually like this a lot. I guess. How are you gonna prepare for it? Pick <laughs> up all the stats in the world. Well, four thousand seven hundred sixty-two. So he wins the correct answer. Actually, four thousand two hundred and sixty. I was four off. That's crazy. Wow. That's rigged. All right. Okay. Shout out Charles Barkley, man. Round mound rebound. Shout out Chuck. Display well, the gritty for the fans. Who? Me. You. I'm not doing it. Do it. No, I'm not grittying. Come on, Matt. I'm not grittying. Cross the whole floor right <laughs> I'll now. I'll gritty on Mel's stream. Matt, come on. No, come on. No, bro. Bro. No. Matt. No. And with Do that, you want to gritty? Not really. Not that. I, didn't win gritty, I didn't win anything. If you want to push me to gritty so hard, you gritty. Let me see your best gritty, Dean. It's the outro. This oh, is the outro. Oh, God. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Here we go. Dean's about a gritty. Dean's going to gritty Leave a like, out. subscribe uh, to um, me and Chris's individual channels as well. Uh, not only that, obviously the ball game channel. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, all the socials, link tree in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Ball game, ball, ball game, game, ball game, ball game. Ball game.
This is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Pretty stupid, by the way. Come on, dude. You you called me out, so right, let's see. You're good. 